everybody. We are live. Welcome to the House of Horrors, where tonight, finally long awaited, everybody's been waiting for Gabriella Pizzolo. How are you tonight? I am so great. I'm so glad to finally be here. This is so exciting. Let's see, like what's been about uh, six months ago, I think, uh, just before the strike. Or, uh, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, it has been long awaited. I, oh my gosh, with strike and everything, it has really been so long since I've last, since we last planned for this. Yeah. I'm so Ooh. glad to finally Ooh. get to do this. What were yes. you doing during that time, during the strike? What were you doing? You know, I I had spent a lot of time uh, showing up at, at first we weren't going to any any events, um, even, even just showing up personally. Um, and so a lot of the time I at first spent just trying to figure out what was okay to, to do and what was, you know, not up to date with protocols and everything. Um, I spent a lot of time kind of finding a lot of new, uh, activities and passions. Uh, I started writing a lot. I, and I also went striking in person a bunch um, since I was really close to some of the locations that um, actually had uh, strikes going on. So I went with some castmates from a bunch of different shows that I had been on, uh, including Stranger Things. So it was, it was really, really fun to get to do that. And most of the time I was really just trying to learn and, and grow as a person uh, into things that n aren't necessarily performance based and, you know, a lot of things that, you know, have to do with artistry. Um, but I never necessarily thought to ex explore or discover more about. Uh, so it was a lot of that. And it was really, really interesting. And definitely also working on, uh, you know, figuring out how we can we can best uh support ourselves as as artists and and actors when we're not working for you know long long periods of time uh it was it was very interesting figuring everything out are you yeah. excited to be able to get back to work yeah absolutely i feel like everyone that i have talked to is still trying to figure out what this whole like post strike workplace is going to look like. Um, even casting directors and directors and writers are talking about what what they want to see. And it's still, it's still, it feels like everything is under construction uh, in a lot of ways. And it's really great. It's really great because getting back to work, everyone is on the same page, at least in, in the fact that nobody knows exactly how we're going to move forward, but we know that it's going to be better off now. Um, so a lot of just making new rules and new plans. Um, and it's been it's been really interesting showing back up on different sets uh, now that now that everything is finally open again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was crazy going through all that. Um, I think I saw, didn't you also um, with uh, some of the Pretty Little uh, Liars cast too, I think you were with them also? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, no. I was with, uh, I showed up uh, to strike and sometimes there would be people from shows that I was on um, that I didn't even know were going to be there and I hadn't seen in years. Uh, so it was really, really exciting. Uh, I got there and the person who played my mother in Pretty Little Liars in like, just like one or two scenes that we had together uh, mm -hmm. She was there, and we, we all kind of got to catch up, and it was so exciting getting to do that because um, that was not planned at all. So it was super fun. So since it's different, um, acting on Broadway and stuff, was there any shows that you were in or just saw plays? Yeah. So especially with Strike going on, I had so much more time to do theater. Mm -hmm. um, so I did a lot of theater in New York. And it was really exciting to get back into that because I hadn't necessarily had time uh, to do that since maybe middle school age. Uh, and that was really exciting. Uh, and I got to see a lot of different shows, too. I saw a lot of friends in, in shows that they were in. I got to see Gate It in Sweeney Todd. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, for anyone watching who doesn't know, that is uh, a cast member of Stranger Things who yeah, plays yeah. Dustin. Um, yeah. So good. So good. I love that show. And I also recently have seen a bunch of shows. I saw Spam a lot, just Spam less than a lot. It was very fun, Monty Python. Yeah. Very um, it was really cool. Um, but specifically I love Sweeney Todd just because uh it's horror. It's of horror course. in in music. It's great. It's so mm-hmm. fun. Yeah. Well, um Stranger Things is gonna be having a play, I believe, in the UK. It's gonna be the prequel. Right, right. Are you are you gonna be going to see that? I sure hope. I was over in the UK not even too long ago, uh, like two months ago, and I saw um, a lot of the people who were working on it, and it's so exciting. It's so exciting because I had never thought that specifically Stranger Things would reach as many me- different mediums as it has as quickly as it has, especially with with different plays that have been based on TV or film series. Um, you know, there I saw Cursed Child, which is in the world of like Harry Potter. Um, and and it, it had taken a little while for like an actual stage play to come from it uh, in the whole realm of the series. And so the fact that a show like Stranger Things that started, you know, less than a decade ago is already, you know, moving forward into theatrics is, is so interesting. So I definitely want to see it, especially also because I... D- <laughs> the funniest thing is most of the cast members don't know information about the story until they are doing it. Um, and I'd love to get to know that whole prequel before anything else, before I see anything else. Um, yeah, definitely useful, definitely exciting. Um, and I have a feeling it's going to really connect in a lot of exciting ways. And uh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah, I didn't know about it. And all of a sudden I was like, what was it? Uh, Stranger Things, uh, Shadows, or whatever. And then you're seeing, oh, it's Vecna before he was Vecna. And, and it's right. gonna have, yeah, it's going to have all the characters, well, the, the adult characters, Hopper and Joyce, all of them when they were younger. And hmm. videos comparing, well, does this, this doesn't look, does this look like David? Does this look like <laughs> Winona? Right. Right. And I've I've seen certain people comparing that. And I think it's so interesting. I think it's so interesting because specifically with the show, there's so many different renditions. It's it's not really based on on anything like other other theatrical uh you know works have been based on on works of literature. Uh this is this is solely like a film media. Um and I feel like because of that, it's it's so based on what the characters, who they are, and 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 David and Winona obviously are, you know, so much of Hopper and Joyce. But it's actually really exciting to see other people, you know, kind of encapsulate that as well and and be a part of that. Um, it's it's so exciting. I feel like there's there's so many different ways that you know side by side maybe it doesn't match up but honestly i feel like that's going to be my favorite stuff about it and you got to play a younger character of an older character in the remake of beaches you played the young cc bloom was it yes yes i did was what played by i kept trying to say her name my hand that's like oh god i'm not gonna try to say it i was butchering it but uh, adina menzel you know in the original Oh, in the original, Bette Midler. Yes, Bette Midler played the adult, but the younger one, was, oh. uh, she she was on she did, uh, what Blossom, and then she went on to do um uh God Big Bang Theory. She played Sheldon's wife, girlfriend. Oh, wife. oh my gosh! Now I forget her name. Now uh, it's like, she plays it's like Amy a... on Big Bang Theory. Yeah. Yes, that is yeah. I had never thought about that. I. have seen the original so many times and I never made that connection. That is so wild. I I was so excited to get to do that specifically because I had seen the original before I even knew that I was going to be a part of that. Um, and I really loved it. And uh, working in the theater world, it's, it's just, it's such a classic. It's turning into a musical now. 
Uh, and so that's that's been very interesting. Um, but that story is just so great. And I I honestly, I loved it. And I, I felt like there was a lot to live up to with oh, the yeah. original. Um, yeah. But yeah. 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 That's one of the movies I think my mom had watched and I had gotten in trouble because I was a little kid. I'd get in trouble and I didn't get put sit to the room. I had to sit on the couch and watch whatever she was watching. So I think that and Color Purple, which is going to be a musical a musical movie. Yes. Well, movies I had to see as a kid because I got in trouble. It's like, don't go to the room, sit on the couch. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Which is a bad thing to do, especially if you're watching soap operas. Because the next thing you know, your kid's going to go, come home from school. What happened on, on all my children in general hospital? Yeah, yeah, that must have been that must have been so interesting. I love that so much. I feel like, oh my gosh, my movies that we always joke in my family that my movies were never just straight up the entire movies. Like when we had to sit and like watch something, it would always just be the endings of really famous movies, but we wouldn't know the context. And we wouldn't know anything else except for the ending. So then when we sat down to actually watch them as adults, we would watch it straight through all the way from the beginning, not knowing anything. And then the last five minutes, we would distinctly remember and go, oh, my God, this is like we I had seen the ending of Die Hard as like a little, little kid and never understood until like watching it full through as like a teenager, like that that was the same exact thing. So, <laughs> so our punishment was watching like five minutes of like, you know, last and then credits. Yeah, and that but he, he, here's the thing. There's a bit of a debate about Die Hard. Is mm. it a Christmas movie or is it? I'm on yes. the side that it's a Christmas. I think it's a Christmas movie too. But I'm trying to get another one going. Lethal Weapon takes place around on Christmas. Oh. So because if you watch it, you know, it's in California and he's buying a Christmas tree. There's Christmas stuff going on. So I call it a Christmas movie also, but so far I'm getting shot down. Ooh. But if no, you watch I'm it, gonna... it's a Christ... it takes around Christmas, so it's a Christmas movie. It does take place during Christmas. That's right. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to side with you. I <laughs> side with you. I Yeah, I totally think... If, if it's if it's a holiday, it's definitely a holiday classic if it's even... The holidays are mentioned in it, in my household. So, Yeah. Very, we have a lot of holiday classics, as you can probably tell. Well, Just okay, well, we're around Christmas time, <laughs> and I'm trying to. Uh, I'm I introduced one of my cousins today to Trans Siberian Orchestra. Oh, what is your favorite good. Christmas? What is your favorite Christmas song? I'm have to go with um, Silent Night. Mm. This is really tricky. Mm. Mm. I'm gonna have to say I really love uh Silver Bells. I will say that because I feel like a lot of that is associated with like the holidays in the city specifically. Uh and that was my childhood. Uh I I grew up a lot, you know, going into Manhattan and working. Um, or just other large cities around the United States. And so I feel like that I always ended up either on my birthday or on like Christmas day working somewhere in a large city. So I feel like that was always playing, hmm. I would have to say. So that that's very associated with Christmas for me. And favorite Christmas movie? Ooh, You know, I I would say if we're talking just anything, Die Hard is great. I was gonna say uh, Die Hard. <laughs> yeah. Die Hard is great. Um, I also love Nightmare Before Christmas. I don't Ooh. know if it's technically a Christmas movie. There's there's so I much to do with that too. Yeah. I feel yeah. like it could be both Halloween and Christmas, maybe. Um, but it's I Hello, got, it's Hello Christmas. That's what oh, it's yeah. a Hello Christmas. Yes. Yeah. Hello Christmas. So you can start watching it in October and it's I mean, okay to watch it until yeah. like midwinter. It's well, perfect. How, exactly. How you watch the end of movies. Well, for this in October, watch the Halloween portion. Yes. <laughs> if you want people to, to give you a strange look in Walmart, start singing that song. This is Halloween because I was in yeah. there and around Halloween and started playing it and I'm I'm a terrible singer but it's not, but everyone's like looking at me like what is he why is he singing that it's but they were they were playing it in the store so it's 
This is Halloween. <laughs> this is Halloween. I love that. That's that's perfect. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to start doing that. I love that people. so much. <laughs> what do you mean this is Halloween? <laughs> or just go around, what's this? What's this? <laughs> what's this? I oh my gosh, so much of the music is so fun. I love Danny Elfman's music. Um mm -hmm. and I whenever I go to conventions, I always end up getting like a, a bunch of little little gifts. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people who either you know follow me really closely or just know certain things that I've mentioned over the years that I love. I love any type of like um like Coraline, Nightmare mm -hmm. Before Christmas, like any of the like like the clay or like stop motion animation, like anything that has to do with that medium, I just love. Mm -hmm. And so there was this one little kid who had uh, I think it might have been when we had met each other in florida mm -hmm. actually it, it may have been um and they had like a, a bumper sticker of the lock shock and barrel from the nightmare before christmas the three little uh kids and now it's on my car anywhere oh, i go was that that family or something i think i might sort of remember yeah that. Maybe like giving gifts to people and stuff or whatever yeah. there was like a couple of daughters i think and a son is that the one or i think so yeah okay i i think it i knew that so, it was so great so i have a whole array of like different like little gifts from like specifically either nightmare before christmas or any of the other like tim burton henry selick like type uh, overseen films uh <laughs> That they oversaw. Um, you know, there's you know, a theory about Jack. Mm. Oh, you go, okay, one, you, yeah, you can start with Frank and Weenie. Okay. The kid who, who makes that dog bring it back. Right. And then the, the corpse's bride. So right. The, the same character. And then Jack. Is his death. Is, is the same. So and the dog the is zero. <laughs> his dog. Oh, my God. <laughs> so like, I, I, I didn't realize that some I've seen videos are like, well, you look at it, follow it. It's the same character through different points in his life and his unlife. Yep. That is so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. To go back and watch. Now when you watch it, you're gonna be like, oh, I've never made that connection. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm gonna go back and watch all three. <laughs> I'm gonna watch all three back to back. The yep. whole life cycle. There is also in like the Pixar, I forget what it was, if it was like the Toy Story toys were like in Monsters, like they like throw in different Pixar stuff. Like if you look in, uh, I can't remember the movies, but I'm sure if like you search what Pixar connections are, they have different uh, characters Juice. in other movies. Supposedly Beta Juice is Jack's first appearance. That there's a scene where it's like some uh, little hat thing he has on and you see the little skulls at the end. It's Jack. Oh. But they say that's Jack's first appearance. Wow. I think it's at the end when he comes out of the ground and he's like that little carnival thing. He's got a little hat on. It's like, look at it. Look at the skulls. It's Jack. Oh, when he goes, stop, bro. He's blowing down the cart. Like, the yeah. Car. Okay. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, because I had heard people who, who had connected the three. I'd never heard the addition of the the whole Beetlejuice that's a uh, universe. Well, I, I, I oh every now and then when I see a Beetlejuice thing, I got to watch it because I love it. Yes. And, and what if, you know, your castmate, you know, Renault Rido is coming back. You know, we'll get another Beetlejuice movie. Yes, I can't yes. wait for that. That's going to be awesome. I am so excited. I am so excited as a kid who was since before I can remember into odd and, you know, whimsically strange terrifying, and strange and unusual things. I myself, um, I, I feel like I just, I'm the, the inner child is so excited to see that. And also as an adult, it's just, it's so exciting that, that she's back with that. That's going to be so good. Uh, did you get a chance to see the Beetlejuice musical when it was, um, playing i did i did my whole entire family saw it and it was so exciting i had originally known a lot of the cast members i i knew the guy who originated the role of beetlejuice um alex brightman had 
played my brother in a show that I did. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was very, it was very great to see him do that. He was very fun. Um, I, I thought like a lot of the visual elements I never thought could be pulled off live and yet somehow they were. So, so that was absolutely wild. It was, it was very much like a, a fun audience engaging experience. I will say any, any horror fan would love being in that audience. Gosh, I it's wish like, I could have seen that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, when we got the Stranger Thing play and they're going, oh, it's going to be Vecna when he was just handing me and all this stuff I'm going, how are they going to pull off his mom's death scene? If they do that, I mean, yeah, given, given that she's lifting in the air and we see, you know, crack, crunch, crunch. Yeah. That's yeah. Out. Ever since yeah. I saw um, Conjuring 3, that possession scene, that, you know, the bones, if you've seen that, yep. the bones, ever since then, that, that sound bothers me of that pop, crack. It creeps <laughs> yeah. me out ever since then. It's like, oh, no, no, no. And all of a sudden, he was seeing all that kind of stuff in Stranger Things. It's like, oh, God, no, not again. That, <laughs> that, creepy. yeah. <laughs> genuinely terrified me the first time that we all sat down i it was it was at the premiere uh for stranger things four all together um we had sat down to you know watch a few of the episodes all together and everyone was screaming it was like it was wild because we had never seen that type of reaction it's a whole different genre of like horror um, it's not just monsters anymore, but like uh, the way that that happened is just terrifying. I don't know how they would do that live, um, but I'm really intrigued to to hopefully get to see because um, that that's just like I love the creativity of of bringing that to be live, you know, especially with Beetlejuice. It, it's so whimsical and difficult to pull off, um, but I feel like. You know, Stranger Things is so serious; it's almost more difficult to pull off live. Um, so I'm interested to see what they do with that for sure. I'm, I'm super excited, and I just I feel like, especially as the series has gone on with with Stranger Things and everything, it has only gotten more horror based. I feel like in the beginning it was very sci-fi; it was yeah. very like you didn't know quite what what world we were in. Um, and it Everything was upside down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Something totally different. And now I feel like we're really moving into something that's like solidifying its its place. I see people at at horror conventions who like uh, genuinely really appreciate a lot of the stuff that has been done in in Stranger Things, and I think that that is so cool. Yeah. I see people dressed yeah. up as as some of the most horrifying moments, um, and it's really amazing because they walk around in it all day and not just like for a split second on a tv screen uh it's incredible yeah and how many how many of them dress up as as susie i've seen mm. what you is know, your reaction though when you see that <laughs> i feel like i haven't seen as many people in person uh dress up as susie uh especially when they do i get so excited i feel like i rarely see that i see it a lot on social media or I'll see people, uh, you know, in who tag me in in something or anything on a social media platform, and uh, uh, it'll be like their Halloween costume, or they're doing a Stranger Things themed birthday party, and they dressed up as one of the characters or as Susie. Um, that is always so interesting, especially because usually they choose the one like never ending story moment. Uh, so it's like it's in a nightgown. You got you got the radio. Um, it's it's always so great. It's always so exciting. Yeah. And then that's your Funko. That's your Funko Pop because I found out there is one of you. Yeah. In the nightgown, in the mic, and it's like some convention is like, wow, she's a Funko Pop. Yeah. <laughs> the most interesting thing is, I I feel like that that specific costuming is so great for a Funko Pop, but I've never seen. Uh, a specific Fungo Pop that could look so much like a person. And then the more I looked at mine and thought like, yeah, that, that actually kind of does look like me. Um, I started looking at all of them and I was like, actually they do look really real for some, like they're very accurate with how they do it. It is wild. Uh, yeah, no, but my sister had collected Funko Pops for so long. And they're evil, they're evil. They're evil. Because, well, look, 
Here, here's how you go. Because this is how it started with me. I bought, I think it was mm-hmm. uh, a Harley Quinn one. Of and course. Then you look, it's from um, Arkham Asylum. I look at the back. Oh, wait a minute. There's these other ones here. And the next right. thing you know, whenever I get them, oh, wait a minute. Oh, this is like the whole daddy. set. <laughs> and then there's, then there's variations because, like, there's a Hot Topic exclusive of Vecna that's on fire. Okay. That's so like, cool. oh, okay, I got it. And then they hot like, Topic oh, Duck. <laughs> yeah, and now you the, 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 okay, oh, it's, it's like, and then, like, you go, okay, oh, it's Vecna. Oh, they have one for Henry. What? Yeah. They have a black, a black light, a black light Vecna? A black like light Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> and so the next thing you know, you're going telling somebody, I um sorry, I gotta take your bed out. I need more space for my Funkos. Yeah. Yeah. I meet so many people at conventions and I always ask them when they have me sign anything that has to do with the pops. Um, you know, some people have collections of thousands, they've got their walls and they're showing me these pictures. It's incredible, but it's it's massive. How how if you really get into it, it's just, it's wild how yeah. how much certain people, how many collections and oh, yeah. like certain specific, like you get into like signing all of them and it's, oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. And, yeah. and like, like with the Bonnie Vecna, for the Stranger Things thing, I think it goes six, it 1463 is supposed to be the last one in the set. Uh-huh. Oh, wait a minute. That's a 1464, which is the Bonnie Vecna. So there's ones they don't list that are part of it. And that's when you're removing your bed because you have to make space for them. So that's why I call them Evo because they just, they're addiction. That's going to be a, a Funko yes. Pop, you know, um, an- anonymous. Literally. There's a, yeah. big, I've got a Funko problem. It's not fun. <laughs> that's why, because I, I, I live in Washington State and one of the main headquarters is in Washington State. So I tell people, really? if, I ever, if I ever go there, I'm not going to tell you because <laughs> I know I'm, I'm going to get, can I send you my shopping list? <laughs> Like, oh my gosh do you do either of you like do you have like serious collections mostly movies and autographs uh, that's pretty much what i, I, have I started to get into the funko but then i had to stop myself because i was running out of space right so. yeah i do have uh, some necas too also not a whole lot but some uh oh, some that come with movies. I'm like i gotta get that one like uh the bloody valentine one that came with the movie this uh, i'm sure you're familiar with screen factory like when they have like special yes. figures with them and stuff yeah oh. neca is its work is just so so tremendous that is so amazing yeah they, they, they did such awesome work it's just like when you see that it's hard not to fall in love with them you can see why they're for aura collectors because you don't want kids playing with something that's gonna be that nice i don't even open them <laughs> it's like they're just nice. <laughs> uh, yeah no, it's like I'm it's kind of funny because like as a collector you don't open it up, but it has all these other pieces you can interchange and stuff like nah, they're good, <laughs> whatever. Is it, is, is it like strange though to see yourself though has an action figure or something like you know with the fungal pop when you see it? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't feel real all of the time. Uh it's it's a very just surreal experience, especially because I feel like if you totaled up the amount of time that I spent working on, you know, the Stranger Things, it really would be such a short amount of time, uh, especially screen time. It's such a short amount of time because there's so many different storylines that that people yeah. keep up with, To to especially in season four. Um, yeah. There's so many storylines that are going on. And uh, <laughs> especially with all of that, you know, I feel like, there's so many different people that have to to have their own like some some sort of like there's so many pops for Stranger Things, mm-hmm. um, and so when I see specifically mine, it's wild because I feel like that's probably the show that I've actually spent th- the least amount of time getting to work on. Um, but it's so exciting to see. Um, it's it's just it's so wild, and especially because. The never-ending story scene in season three really like blew up in oh, the yeah. way it did so hard, and so it, it became so massive. Yeah. Um, and it it really was five minutes of of goofing around and and figuring stuff out, and that's all it took. And it was it was just a really quick, fun experience, and it literally took a a day, a matter of hours to do. It was yeah. so yeah. 
there's two big musical scenes in that entire show. There's the never ending story, yeah. and there's master of puppets, which um which yeah. is like, it's like what was it? What Dustin tells Eddie is like metal most metal moment or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. So many people loved like the never ending story. And I feel like they really did play into like the very musical musical aspects of like the whole entire show ever since then. Especially because not only do we have the whole Master of Puppets scene, I feel like uh, Kate Bush was such a big part of, of oh, yeah. uh, yeah. Max's arc. I feel like, and I think Gaten has talked about how like Sadie Sink is is very associated with that song now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I feel like they really have leaned into all of their like musical aspects ever since. Mm -hmm. well, and and I know I grew up in the eighties. I love the music, tremendous. Prince just picked up uh, the 40th anniversary for uh, Thriller. Oh, perfect. I mean, um, but going with music, who is your favorite singer or artist? And is there anybody you would like to do a duet with? Oh, my gosh. Oh, this is tricky because I feel like this is my whole job is like uh, uh, singing with people. Um, ooh. I feel like I've already done so many incredible duets with people I never thought I would. I would have to say, like, I love Lady Gaga. Yeah, I love Lady Gaga. Gaga. Um, I love like how how odd a lot of her early stuff is, especially and then and and then she was in American Horror Story. Yes. It, it yeah. feels kind of perfect as such an avid horror genre fan yeah. uh, to get to do something like and, that. And now is why I say something embarrassing because my cousin's sitting a few feet from me. Yes, oh I've, sung, I've sung along to I Was Born This Way. I <laughs> haven't we all. <laughs> He's I, laughing at me. I think everybody has. When you know yeah, <laughs> at some point, yeah. I find that people who like really love uh like just creepy or odd things also are just very like um it can can really relate with that and also with with how like the, the visuals of a lot of her music videos are so wild and her live performances i just feel like there's so much for me that i love about it um plus as a music person i just love I love her and, and she moved more into film and that's incredible. Yeah. Um, I feel like definitely that. I also love like a lot of older groups. I love Queen. Um, a lot of, yeah, like a lot of really, a lot, a lot of older groups. If we're not talking like early 2000s when I grew up, you know, I have a lot of, a lot of artists from then that I really love, but yeah. I really do listen to a lot of old yeah. music. The, the reason why I think I mainly hate MTV, because when mm. I was a kid, I got to when I got thirteen, I could have cable in my room. Okay, it, it took him a while to put it in my room. But the day they put it in was the day he died. Freddie died, so I turned it on. Like, oh, we yeah, got MTV. Do -do -do -do. MTV News was sorry to announce the death of Freddie Mercury. MTV, wow. you suck. Wow. And I've, I've kind yeah. of held, I've, I've held a grudge against them for breaking my heart ever since. Mm. Wow. That is really what are the odds? The day that because he said. you want to talk about yeah. a singer. Look at all the all the different types of you know, he could do like pop, he could do rock, all the styles that Queen could do, all good Freddie can do. He even yeah. did opera. Yes, yes, it is it is so wild that like the how much they they moved into. And I feel like a lot of the the groups from the 60s to 80s were so influential in like the different genres that that we have now that all kind of branched from like everyone just trying everything and i just i love that i love a lot of the roots especially because my parents had me and my sister so like trained in like what everything originally came from and what their classics were so a lot of the people who ask me about songs from the 80s pertaining to the show or songs in the 90s from Pretty Little Liars that I worked on. Uh, they'll always ask if I was into 80s and 90s culture. Um, I really was even before I was in the shows themselves because my parents were 
so adamant about having us, you know, know all of all of these classics for us, from such an early age. I think in kindergarten, if you had asked me what my favorite movie was, I would have said The Dark Crystal. Like, <laughs> I a Labyrinth, right? <laughs> yes, and Labyrinth. I love Labyrinth too, but I love The Dark Crystal. Dark yeah. Crystal. Did you new. check out that um that TV show, the Netflix show they did? Pretty yes. Cool. Yes. I did. My whole family watched it. It was really interesting. It was really cool. It was really I still, cool. I still need I still need to watch it. In fact, I right. was one of those who thought, I'll never be in the Stranger Things. I'll never be into it. But then I watched your episode from you know season three. And I go, I'm gonna watch it from the beginning. And Steven goes, Well, I know I told you to watch it from season one, not season yeah. three. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know I had told myself I was just gonna do season three, but he told me season one. So I went back and next thing you know, I'm sitting there like by the end of season one. I mean, not even by the end, like Man, this is an awesome show. Why did I put that off? That is so amazing. I hear so many people say that. I'm I'm actually surprised because a lot of people do come up to me and say, I only started watching like this year or like last year. And it's it's interesting because even without new content coming out, besides besides the the play that is happening, um you know, the show has is still like there's people who haven't watched it who are just starting to now. And that's so exciting. I feel like it's great to be a part of something that is really like not only a time capsule, uh, you know, to the 80s and to, you know, now. But like, I feel like I'm a part of something that people actually will be able to access for a yeah. long time. It's it's really exciting. It's really cool. And of course, you know, I mean, since it's in the 80s, you got to. I get so fascinated by when they have to do a you know a period piece. You gotta what is it like to have to put on that, you know, the 80s style of hair and the clothes. Oh and I, I I again I grew up in the 80s, I love the clothes, and I will stand by when I I have always stood by this. The hair can stay there. <laughs> the yeah. hairstyle can stay there. Yeah, you know, a lot of a lot of the um you know, hair, costume, wardrobe, uh makeup people are very aware of that. <laughs> And they they do lean into that. And though I love it, it is so interesting to see how different some of the actors look when they're just not playing who they play. Um, <laughs> I Specifically for me, I feel like I have, as Susie, such a, a kind of more modest and like, uh, but also very styled. Like she wears a lot of bows. Um, she's got her very specific, like, vests that she wears. Um, it's, it's really such a specific style that I had never quite seen represented, like, as a part of the 80s. But because she's so religious and she lives, like, in such a, a religious hotspot, it's, it's so interesting getting to do something that I didn't necessarily see represented as, like, a, a thing and a point in time in the 80s when so much of you know specifically Mormonism was was going through so much in the 80s um I think that it's really interesting that they touch on that and I think the Duffer brothers um when they were originally coming up with the concept of everything they had based Susie on one of their high school friends and had told me a bit about her um and I, I just think it's so interesting because I know little to nothing about who this person is now or, you know, where she is. But she sounds like the most interesting person. And to stick out in the Duffer's minds uh, as like, oh, I need to make a character of that person like that. That must be so interesting. Mm -hmm. I've always thought like that has got to be so cool. And I don't know. It feels kind of odd to to play someone that is based off of someone they knew, but they. I wonder if she's it. watched the show. <laughs> I know. I realizes, wondered. hey, that's me. Uh, I've always wondered. I've always wondered. Um, but yeah, it's it's just been it's it's so interesting getting to see how they represent the time, and and the the specific years they move through. You know, even yeah. though. It There's was something, the, yeah, season one was 83 yeah. and up to 85, 86. 85, 86, yeah. Um, it's so amazing how 
different each of the seasons feel from each other, even though there's really only a year difference. Um, I think it's really great that they really get to delve into so much of like such a specific close amount of time and, and how different even that was from each other. Well, they, they caught one thing with Billy and his tight jeans because back then, oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who, my who God. Who cannot forget George Michael shaking his butt in his tight jeans? Yeah. The close up of um, Bruce Springsteen's tight pants. Oh, my gosh. God I... knows they loved the tight jeans back then. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And you can tell by the nineties, but by the nineties, we liked baggy pants. I think by then we were just were, people were sick of the tight jeans by the by the so it went to tight to baggy to saggy. <laughs> That's the, yeah. That exactly. Funny. It's an evolution. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows how good it yeah. went? But yeah. Yeah. It, it no pun intended, but it went down. Uh <laughs> yeah. Down. Oh yeah. And, I love you know, that. And you know, Pretty Little Lyles, you're in not much of, of the show, but you're a very important character. Right, you right. Know, you know, they have this horrible thing happen to this character. And then we see, you know, how many ever, 20 years or whatever later, we're mm -hmm. seeing the impact. Right. Yet, you're, you're not in it that much. It's, wow. Yeah. It is really funny because when I had originally started the show... I had auditioned off of one scene um, and it was really, really quick. If I go back to the original video that I, I had sent into them, it was, I'm pretty sure only a minute long. Like it was a matter of seconds and it was one scene and it showed barely anything. And I remember it was a scene that ended up happening in episode like four of the series. And so when I showed up for shooting, you know, the first episode and, and the whole beginning of the show, which is kind of like the bulk of what I, I the whole story stems from, um, I, I knew that there was no way that I was only there for one day. Like, um, and they had originally told me, you know, this is a one day guest character. Um, and as soon as... I had read the entire thing and I hadn't seen this, the scene that I auditioned with in it. Um, and it wasn't a pre-existing, you know, uh, scene. I kind of was like, I think I'm coming back, but I don't know how much of it I'm actually going to be in. And it ended up being like really a few minutes in each episode, um, just showing like one memory each episode. The um, yeah. Yeah. Which was really interesting. I only found out like halfway through the experience that it was going to be for the entire time that the show was shooting season one. So um, it was very, it was very interesting experience. Um, I feel like a lot of the things that made it the most fun was the cast was kind of a lot of the same things with Stranger Things since I feel like they're in a very similar genre of like horror, but also, um, you know, they relate to a lot of different people and it, it's not scary enough that it it is um, something that can't be easily watched by by anyone with the whole family. Um, I feel like with that specifically, you know, going back and looking at the first few episodes, we had no idea like what the story, any of the really relevant information that would have been really important to know, uh, we did not know. So it was it was really interesting going back and being like, oh, my gosh, like that was all right there, especially, you know, um, <laughs> with Pretty Little Liars. The whole thing is really the big mystery. Um, and even down to this whole thing that happens in the 90s with my character that everything, all the mystery is is based around. They didn't even tell me like what I was going to be in a part of any of that. Um, so it was really, it was really fun to get to kind of play guessing games with all the rest of the cast and even some of the writers. Yeah. So also like speaking of like the auditions and stuff. So even for like Stranger Things, I mean, I'm sure, you know, they're like top secret, like what kind of like side did they have you audition with or was there any other character or how did they have you audition for that? Right, right. I 
had known about the show because I had, first of all, I had seen it. And even before it had come out, I had known a bunch of people who went in for it um, to audition for Eleven. Um, and it, it seemed so interesting. And I think what they they did with the scenes for for different people when they were first bringing them in is they chose something that was you know, maybe not so relevant to the plot of the show, just so that way no spoilers ever came about from from people who had just, you know, accessed the the scenes that they were doing. With me specifically, um, I auditioned with the never ending story scene. And it was interesting because I had no idea they had changed the names of the characters. It so it wasn't Dustin and it wasn't Susie. Um I believe it was like Timmy and Jenny or something really similar to that. Um, and it was really funny because I was like, I don't know who would be saying this, but they're obviously together. They're obviously a couple. And so it would have to probably be one of the kids. And it really just sounds like Gaten. Like it sounds like stuff that they would write for him. And so I kind of did my audition based off of like just inferring that I was working with, you know, the character Dustin. And I based a lot of the the humor and, you know, kind of the, the fun stuff about that scene off of that. And I ended up being right about that. And that was so exciting. And they revealed to me, you know, like that obviously those weren't the names and, and they explained a lot of things. Um, but the audition process was very, very fast. Um, aside from the secrecy of not knowing, you know, really anything uh, about what the scene meant or what any of it meant, uh, they had only cast me based off of that one, you know, self tape video. Uh, and they didn't ask for any callbacks. Um, they said, great, um, if you're available, could you come down like next week uh, to Atlanta, Georgia? And uh, <laughs> so I was like, yes, of course. And it was it was so exciting. It, it came about really, really quickly. And it was really exciting, especially because I had no idea what I was in for. Um, and luckily, it was the same, the same scenes, the same information. Um, and I was just super excited. I was super excited. There's a, a clip of, of Gaten. I guess some people they don't you know it's it's Susie Poo and Dusty Dusty Bun. But right. I guess there's a clip, I guess some people were calling him Dusty yes. Buns. <laughs> so there's a funny clip oh. of him going, you know, you're talking about my butt. He's like, Dusty it's not Bun. Dusty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He he I love everything that he has commented on, specifically with Susie and Dustin. I've seen him like how he feels about the never ending story song is so different from how I feel about it. Cause if you ask him about it, like he'll be like, no, 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 no. Like if you're asking me, like, I feel like I'll usually end up singing it with someone or mm -hmm. I'll end up talking about it a lot. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty fine with it. I feel like with him, it's so associated with like his character on the show. Now it's, it's kind of wild. Cause I could have never imagined that just that one scene would like, be as as big for him as it was um obviously I, I had assumed that maybe for me it would have been since it was one of the only things that i i had done that was really you know a standout moment of, of the show but for him he's got a lot of moments he's got a lot of good moments oh, yeah. and oh, that yeah. was the one that like really stuck with a lot of specific fans and yeah. I, I think it's hilarious because he's He's like, if they're going to talk about it, they gotta talk about it right. It's not Dusty Bun. It's it's not Dusty Buns. It's Dusty Bun specifically. <laughs> well, one. What's really <laughs> great about that scene is we first hear about Susie in the first episode. And, yeah. And he can't get a hold of her, so they're kind of like thinking she's not real. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And at the end, of the reaction we see um, it's Robin and uh, uh, Steve, and then the back card is like. Right. Susie, <laughs> yeah, and even I'm, you know, day, uh, we see uh, Harper and Joyce and um, what's his name? 
that was a bow or whatever. When they're trying to get yeah. that code, they go like, what? Their reactions are the best yeah. reactions. He's like, like against the wall. <laughs> oh my gosh. All this thing. Yeah. And this, and this, like, people have done little cartoons to that scene and animations to that scene on YouTube where you get these the hand drawn stuff. You get little dolls of you guys animated singing that song. They, they just take the audio from that scene and they animate it. Because I'm, 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 I'm like looking stuff up and all of a sudden I'm like, Stranger, Stranger Things, you know, you know, never in the story. Wow. Okay, you've seen, have you seen the movie? Never in the story. Yes. What do yes, you think I about have. that movie? It's so good. It's such a classic, but it's really sad. I remember watching it as a really little kid. I must have been in kindergarten, um, maybe first grade. And I was super young and I was really, really upset. You know, oh, as yeah. the horse. <laughs> Our yeah. I was so upset. I was so upset. Um you know, I, I love it. I love it so much. It's a, it's very intense. It's very intense, but it's so cool. It's so that, cool. The, that scene with the horse traumatized a lot of kids. Yes. That, that's probably a reason. Whenever time I come across clips from that, that movie, if that <laughs> scene is there, I would not watch that scene. And the fact that I haven't seen the movie in years, mm -hmm. I think I'm one of those kids who got, one of the guys who was a kid got traumatized. No, no. It's, yeah. Every every kid did. It's like the most strong, like, no. You got the tears, you got the tears going and you're screaming, no. It is so, yeah. I so I was definitely one of those kids too. I was a little late to the game, definitely, but <laughs> I was equally as traumatized. Um, the funniest thing is like when my friends, when I was a little kid, would come over and want to watch something or do something, I would have all these suggestions, but they would be movies that, you know, were not from now, and they would have never heard of them. And I think I accidentally traumatized a bunch of other people with that movie, too, um, a bunch of other little kids. So we've got a whole generation of people my age who, you know, specifically if they grew up with me, also knew that scene and also were equally as upset. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it was that scene and the original animated Transformers movie. I actually knew uh, some of Optimus Prime because all my friends who watched it and they, they, they introduced the, the sister to that, to the franchise, Transformers, by watching that scene from the original, from the 80s cartoon, mm -hmm. of Prime dying, and they was teasing her. Because everyone, because they, they were crying, because she cried the whole time. Yeah, I can tell you firsthand. Yeah, some of us guys, you know, in the theater, sitting and watch it, we cried too. Oh my gosh! And then, and then we got mad when we saw his replacement. Like, <laughs> we were like he sucks. One of his sucks. Give us Prime back. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Yeah, there is there is so much from specifically the '80s that I feel like watching it now, like. It still is so like it has the same value and the same like emotional impact as it did then and then there's there's other stuff that like you know especially like with J movies like jaws like mm -hmm. it's equally as scary even though all the technology and all the stuff that was in that movie from was from so long ago like a lot of it is just still so effective and uh, that's just why I, I love it so much and i love that you know i get to be a part of a show that's such a love letter to that it's amazing what, what's, what's really good about the show is i was watching season one and 11 is watching tv and all of a sudden i hear he man <laughs> yep. and i just got to peek <laughs> up like like wait a minute Yes, because like there, there's a story about me. And my, I have an older brother. We used to watch a lot of these cars. We watched uh, Transform. I'm not trans uh, Fortron. We oh. have one of his friends going because we're watching the old cartoons and we need forums. We're going. We're, we're, we're doing it along with it. Form right and left leg, you know, and you know right and and also we're making all the movements. And his friend sits there and he looks at us and he goes, "What is wrong with you two? Oh my god, I love that. I love that so much. There, there really is so much in the show that is so, especially watching my parents watch the show. They'll, like, a commercial will come on and they'll, like, be able to recite it after all this time. And they'll be like, yep, I knew that one. Yep. Or, like, I had that clock. I had that jacket. Um, mm -hmm. One of the... I, I, I had the tight jeans. Yeah, you you were so you were one of the billies. You were one of the the, the tight jeans people. <laughs> no, I I did the uh, 
I probably did do that in elementary, the tight jeans. Oh my Did you God. dress up as a Ghostbuster too? <laughs> no, I, I did something even worse. Uh, I had a I was a little kid with a mullet. Oh, okay. I feel like that was that but, but, but I, I had I had I had reason why I had to have a mullet. My father oh. was in the Navy, and the rule was we can have long hair, couldn't be past the shoulders, couldn't be in the front sides of top, it could only be in the back. Mm. Okay. So, because he didn't want us, me and my brother's like, no, no, I don't want my boys having long hair. So we had to get to an, an argument. So I did the mullet, the, the 80s mullet. Wow. Which is why I say hair can, hairstyles can stay in the 80s. You know, and the funniest thing is I know so many people now with mullets. And so it, it definitely, it's, to a certain oh, extent, yeah. you know, it, oh, random question. I see. Yeah. I see random have you seen question. the princess? Have you seen the princess bride? I, I definitely have. Which, I have. which had another one of your castmates in it. Right, Carrie. Carrie A, yeah. So great. Such a great movie. I quote it all the time with my family. It's it's so fun. And it's also like g being in college, uh, specifically in art college, Um there's a lot of artists who were even now are so inspired by the art and and the the work with with the specific costumes and sets used in that in that movie. It's it's so incredible. Um, so it definitely comes up a lot in my day to day studies and also when I'm out at work, people talking about it um, or or through meeting Carrie and being friends with Carrie. You know, it's so incredible. Um, yeah, I have always loved Princess Bride. So great. Well, there's a, like some movies I got great visuals from the 80s, you know, with okay, never new story, Princess Bride. Yeah. Krell mm. uh, was another one with a, the castle that would teleport. Um, yeah. You know, Labyrinth. Of other, than, other than uh, David Bowie's outfit, <laughs> for obvious reasons, the big joke about that. Um, uh, Dark Crystal, a lot of these movies. Dark Crystal, are yeah. Incredible. Such visuals. great world building. Like, it's so incredible. I I love it so much. A lot of it, too, especially the ones that Jim Henson had, like, any hand in. Like, just have such a unique style and, and character. And, like, Bones it's got, yeah, Mr. Bones is naming it. Another good one that had some good visuals. <sighs> the Explorers. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. There's so many. There are so many, and I feel like they're so easy to categorize together. And when I think about like movies and franchises today, it's so different because I feel like it, it's just, it's such a different time and everything is so different from each other that it's not as easy to, to you know, put everything in one category. Um, but especially like then, like a lot of them have like, very similar, beautiful, like visually stunning, like artistry in them. It's incredible. Yeah, you talk about Flight of the Navigator. Flight of the Navigator is one had some pretty cool visuals. Have mm. you seen that one yet? When the ship would no. uh, Flight of the Navigator, uh, it's one of the kids in the seventies, and he falls into a ditch and it comes out of the ditch and it's the eighties, oh and the spaceship had crashed, and for somehow all of its navigating maps are in the kid's head. Oh my gosh! And it's uh, Paul Rubens' voices. Okay. Ship. And you don't really know it until one part when he does a ha. I know you want one of mine. He does Pee Wee's voice. <laughs> and oh my gosh! I know that voice, but it's great. Mm. They have this scene where the ship has spaceship has one shape, and then the go like warp speed. It stretches. So they have that... to do this like '80s like CGI effect of stretching it. Oh. And it's a pretty cool movie if you haven't seen it. I love that. Because, because I, this is this is when you're reverse, this is a kid from the seventies used to everything in the seventies into the eighties, and then he's seeing like the eighties style, and he's like, "Oh, they go, boy George, is it boy George?" <laughs> <laughs> what? I love that so much. The, you know what? Maybe maybe I'll start watching it and I'll know the last five minutes. <laughs> You're right. You'll be like, I saw this movie. Oh. I do know this. That usually is what ends up happening. So I would not be surprised when I, I go and sit down to watch it that, that that ends up happening. 
Um, since you're a horror fan also, uh, what was the first horror movie you remember and any uh, 80s horror that you enjoy as well? Ooh. Okay. So the first horror movie I think I ever watched was Poltergeist. Um, and I think it was because it was both my mom, my mom specifically really loves that movie, but also that was the first scary movie that she ever saw, except I was like maybe six. She was like two and actively has like memories of watching it as a two-year-old, which is wild. I don't think I remember being two, but, um, <laughs> I remember like being really terrified of really specific parts, really specific parts really scared me. And I think if I'm talking eighties horror, I feel like I, I immediately think of like Friday the 13th and like just nightmare on Elm street, like all of the like franchises that mm -hmm. like, on uh, 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 Friday, another one of you guys' castmates. Yes. The great, the great Robert England. Mm -hmm. It is wild how many 80 stars they yeah. have in the show. And, and, and you, you, you want to talk about really, you know, incredible actors. But by the time he was doing Freddy, he was on V. Yeah, me. Playing the complete opposite of Freddy. He played right. one of the aliens, but he wasn't like, oh, I'm evil, I'm going to eat you. He's like, I just want to be your friend. I don't want to eat you. I want to be nice. He was the, he was the nice alien. Yeah. So. The complete opposite. It's like, it's so weird. It's around the same time. So it's so weird to watch him play like completely different and nice. The guy you want to be friends with because he'd be a really nice guy to be in this, you know, hey, I know I'm going to get the claws here. I'm going to get you. Yeah. 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 That is, that is so, that is just such a testament to like how incredible he is. I remember this specific moment in so my parents sat me down and I watched Scream for the very first time uh like the original Scream and then I watched uh you know Robert England being Freddy Krueger and then I went back and watched Scream and they were like do you notice anything and it's like that one little moment where he's like the janitor in the hallway. Oh, well, that, that, they call that, him that, Freddy. Yeah. <laughs> I love, they call him Fred. There we go. Yeah. 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 I just, I love how much of a staple it has become in, in everything. He's so talented and it's yeah. it was so, it was such a perfect decision to have him as a member of not only the cast, but like the whole Creole family Vecna yeah. origin story. It's so incredible. Mm -hmm. I think when yeah. they said he was cast, that cost caught a lot of people's attention because he's a horror icon. Yes. And it's just like right now I've been hearing, I don't know if it's true, whether you can confirm it or not, Linda Hamilton's gonna be in season five. I I've, have... I've been hearing I've been hearing that rumor pop up. I'm like, what wait a minute, Linda yeah. Hamilton. I have heard that too, and I have absolutely no idea yet, but I really hope it's true. Because you play that, Susie's aunt, maybe. <laughs> I, yeah. I would literally probably pass out. Right. That would be so exciting. Oh, you're coming back. There we go. <laughs> well, is, it was, is there any like horror? Act, I'm not horror, but '80s actor or actress you would love to see on Stranger Thing and maybe do a scene with? Ooh, that's so tricky because I feel like I would have said Winona. I would have said Winona, and Winona is such a huge part of the show. Um, ooh. I feel like we got to, since we have Robert England, I feel like we got to have some, like, other, like, uh, like we got to have Jason in there. We got to have, we got to have everybody who played, like, a prominent, like, horror character. I love that for, like, the very ending of the show. That yeah. was so fun. Put, put, put some Kane Hodder in there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Seriously. Um, oh my goodness. But every single time I go and start thinking like, oh my gosh, you know who they haven't had yet? They end up being there in the next, you know, episode that they write even. It's, it's so wild. Um, I also, I was going to say like, they've had their whole like Sean Astin moment and everything. It's so great. It's so, it's so amazing. How many people that they have gotten and like, why did they kill him off? I like Bob. I know. 
it's always it's always the nicest characters end up getting like killed off at the end of their season. It's wild. It's yeah, wild. It's yeah, always we, we, fan yeah. favorites too. It's yeah, and favorite. we're looking at Eddie. We're looking at Eddie. We're looking at Barb, um, Alexi. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. I know people. I know people who are still so upset about Billy too. But hey, at least we got uh, that cameo in season four. That was great to see him. Yes. It, all, it just you know, open the door, open the door. And he comes through and angry and stuff. It's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I uh, I was I was so intrigued when I had seen you know the whole list of of names for the episodes because as soon as I saw that Dear Billy was something, I was like, I bet I bet there's so much more there. I and I was hoping I had heard, you know, through the loop that that he was back, but I didn't know how. And and when I finally got to see it, I was I was actually surprised at, you know, how creepy they made him as as, you know, the version of him that he was in season four. Yeah. Well, that, so that, that's, that's one thing that was cool about the character about Vecna is how he can just mess with people's heads by bringing yeah. back these people. And we see Billy and it's just like and the way we see him angry, you know. Bat hitting, breaking that window, coming out at her, you know. It's like, yeah. 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 But by the way, my favorite Billy scene is that scene. It's in season two, which he's telling him, leave my friends alone. He's like, no, she takes that that bat with uh, the nails in it, boom, right between his legs. like, leave him alone. It's like, yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. most guys, if most guys, if you do that too, they'd be going, whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. I remember watching season two. Season two came out um, like right around Halloween. I think I was watching it. Um, and I was super close with Sadie Sink and her whole family because the first show that I ever did on Broadway was Matilda the Musical. Yeah. And her older brother was in it with me. Um, and I played Matilda, and if anybody knows like the story or you know the the movie with Mara Wilson, um, I played Matilda, and he played Bruce Bogtrotter, the kid who has to eat the enormous chocolate cake. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> um, Sadie came to the show all the time and saw her brother in it, and she was also on Broadway at the time in Annie and. Uh, a couple of other shows. So I watched season two uh, specifically because I knew a lot of the kids and I was super close with Sadie and her family. And the introduction of Max and Billy was just so badass. It was so good. It was mm -hmm. so good. I remember being like, oh my gosh, their dynamic with each other is just like a complete like push and pull throughout season two. And I think it's so cool. Like at the very end when like, she has the final word for a good bit of time. Like I was like, yeah, she's gonna have the, she's gonna have the final word yeah. for a good bit of time. Yeah, yeah. but it's like season one, the, the human jerk character was Steve. Right. Like, we we need a new one, Billy. Yeah. Right. Because he, was, he was, was yeah, was but he crazy. was worse. He was a lot worse than than Steve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Steve became so redeemable. You know. Mm -hmm especially seeing like how much he has changed throughout as a character throughout the show, you know, you there's, would yeah. never know that there's it's a little, there's a, that little joke scene from season four because he kept getting beat up. He couldn't beat anybody. So <laughs> yeah. then he that, like, yeah. he, he knocked that thing out and they're like, Hey, uh, you beat somebody. Oh <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I love the scene with him and, um, uh, Dustin in it when they're at the ice, you got the job on. They're doing their, uh, and it's just like, are all your friends little kids? Uh, <laughs> they, no. they, they have that like shake and whatever. Ooh, all that yeah, they someone's there. got a question for you. <laughs> what character would you like to play on Broadway? So. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Ooh. Oh, I feel like there's so many. Yeah, that's my um, mom that popped by. She had that question for you. So. <laughs> yeah, I have so many shows that are my favorites. I love the show Falsettos. I love the show. I love Rent. I love Rent. Um, Ragtime. I love like a lot of shows that are based on like historical events, even if they're really like um, 
like newer age historical events. But I feel like also having seen Sweeney, and I love Sweeney, I'd love to be in Sweeney Todd, just as anyone. It would be so fun. Um, or any of the other like more modern horror musicals, you know, um, some shows didn't commercially do that well. I know there's like, there's Carrie and Heathers. Heathers did pretty well, but never went to Broadway. Um, but Carrie didn't do too well. Um, I'd love to be in a horror musical, you know. There, there, there is or was Evil Dead the musical. Don't know yeah. I like that. That was actually pretty good. I like that one. Yeah. They have them at conventions. Like you can get like copies of them and stuff. Oh, really? yeah, yeah. All, you, all you can just go to YouTube. And it's usually so much on YouTube floating around for free to watch. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, you can probably find it on YouTube, but. Yeah, the that copy that so I got actually was pretty decent uh, quality for the one that I got. I was surprised because, you know, sometimes you don't know how it's going to be when you get those right. copies at conventions. And, but yeah. That is so amazing. Yeah, no, I would definitely say anyone in a horror musical, just because I love scary, odd things so much. And having them be like a part of like a, a typically, like I feel like when I think of musicals, I really do think, and I think of Broadway, I think. You know, definitely not terrifying, very enjoyable, very entertaining. Um, but like sometimes terrifying things can be really entertaining, um, well, even when they're mixed with like people singing at the same time. Um, so I'd love to do one of those shows. Really. There's one, there's one, I guess it's horror. It's not really terrifying. It's legendary. It's iconic. Rocky Horror. Oh my goodness. <gasps> I love Rocky Horror. I love Rocky Horror so much. Um, oh my goodness. Yeah, anyone in that too. Uh, that would be so fun. I do, love do you Do you ever randomly start, you know, for the fun of it, just start singing those songs from that movie? Yes. I've, I've done Time War and uh, Double Feature, Science Feature, whatever. I've done yes. That yep. Yes. Yeah, I changed my mind. That's like definitely one of the top horror musicals i think to ever exist mm -hmm. um so definitely something in that too um I, 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 i've talked about this in streams i don't know if they do this in other cities they do this in seattle i used to if you're a first time person going to see the movie at the theater the mm -hmm. uh, tickets in the u district they call you a virgin and they make you stand in front of everybody in your bra in your underwear mm -hmm. in your underwear Oh, wow. Which is why if I would ever go, I'm going to lie out my rear end. <laughs> they yeah. had, um, I went up, um, it was, was it the first time I saw one at a convention? I can't remember. But what was funny is um, they had a Captain Kirk blow up doll and they wanted you to do something like weird to it or something funny. So I acted like, I was, I was like, who's the captain now, bitch? <laughs> and everybody was laughing. And, it was, and then this other guy, he want like, it's saying something funny, like act like whatever, you know, so I thought that'd be funny. And then the guy who won, which was so stupid, he just grabbed it. He almost ruined it. He jumped on it. He put it on the floor and jumped on it, like deflated it. I'm like, well, no, you're ruining it. That's not really funny. That's just like, just, I was like, I could have done that, but I thought it'd be funny to be like a funny line, like something with Star Trek, you know? And then I'm yeah. like, how, how could that person get the prize? Like, come on, people. That's messed up. Like, oh that, that's like the kind of humor, like seriously. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but, okay. And, okay. Season three, Stranger Thing. We saw the song was never in the story. Yeah. Season yeah. four. Master of Puppets, by the way, freaking love it just because I'm a Metallica fan, older stuff. Yeah. What song would you like to see them, if they were to pick a song for a scene in season five, what song do you think they should go for from the 80s? Ooh. Hmm. One that they haven't already done, too. Specifically, it would be like 85, 86. Uh, let, me, let me look up. I, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm time accurate. Um... Let me see. Um, I I always love. It. You know what? I don't know when it was popular exactly, but I I have to go with anything but electric slide. Anything but electric slide. <laughs> no, no. In, in elementary in the eighties, they would play that song and try to make us do that dance, and I could never do it. Mm. I love that. That's that's wild, and I I understand completely why you would not want that. But, yeah, think, you know what would be interesting, actually, thinking about it, something Bon Jovi. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Something Bon Jovi. Because, okay. 
because of of Millie Bobby Brown. That's right. Yeah. She's, with, um, <laughs> she's uh, dating his. Oh, uh, she uh, dating his. Or engaged. His son, yeah, yeah engaged. they're engaged, I believe. But the yeah. thing is, whatever song it is, whatever scene it is, it has big shoes to fill with Never Ended Story and Master of Puppets. Those yeah. would be some hard shoes to fill. That's the tricky thing now. Is that I feel like it's got to be something really good. I'm sure they'll. I'm sure they'll figure it out and they'll have something incredible. That'd be it's awesome if they had Bon Jovi in like a little cameo in season five. Right? That would be awesome since they, you know they. I'm sure. Oh, <laughs> you know what? I might just. I might just call them up. I might just call them up. Hey, hey Tuffer Brothers, uh, Bon Jovi. <laughs> if, if Millie Bobby Brown, if Millie hasn't already. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of great. Okay, <laughs> I would say Bla Blaze of Glory is an mm. 86. I think that's whenever uh, Young Guns 2 came out, so it'd be much later. Right. So, but it, uh, yeah, Let's see, what is it? Uh, you Give Love a Bad Name. Yeah. yeah. But it, it has to live up to, again, I mean, we saw, you know, with, with uh, again, as a, if you look up, you know, Stranger Things, Never in the Story, there's a lot of stuff out there. Have you got you and Gaten singing it? The da animation. Do how many do they, do people come to you the conventions and randomly sing you that song? Yes, all the time, all the time to both me and Gaten. And I think I think it's amazing, especially when we're together, uh, or they will, especially when we're doing panels. They'll ask if we can perform it, and for a short amount of time during the SAG strike, we weren't allowed to. Um, because most of the panels also, nobody was allowed to talk about anything that they had previously worked on that had to do with, um, film, like, um, that wasn't independent. Mm -hmm. Um, so a lot of the panels went from please sing never ending story to like, you know, I was with, <laughs> I was with Eduardo who plays Argyle and, and yes. Charlie, Australia, <laughs> um, who, uh, Nancy and Jonathan. And we were just talking about like our favorite foods, um, what we were excited to do this week, like <laughs> what our plans were for the day, and like our favorite types of birds. And so like, what's your favorite type of bird? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, exactly. Like those types of questions. I now Eduardo, uh, Eduardo didn't have one. But I was talking. I love magpies. I love magpies because I specifically we were all in Liverpool, and I, it was my first time seeing one in real life. So that was very exciting. But this should uh, have been Dodo Bird. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. I think that I think that that was brought up at one point. But the the questions that were asked were, you know, anything just random. That you, know, we, you know, get to know a person that didn't have to do with like the work that they had done. Um, well, it was really well, funny. Yeah, someone said that Eduardo has an infectious laugh. That he can get does. people laughing. Like you could be laughing for a long time once he gets going with them. Yeah, that is very true. That is very true. He's very fun. He's also a lot of people don't like a lot of people wouldn't realize he's also like really, you know, down to earth um, in a really in a specific way that I haven't seen in most people. Um, and it's it's so fun to get to work with him. He'll come up with the funniest things um, when we were shooting certain scenes where he's in the the Susie's house, he was improving a lot of the lines that he actually uh, said. And so like a lot of the stuff that ends up making the final cut is not in the original script when it comes to him. And I think that that is so amazing. Um, you know, he comes up with like the best one liners and most of the time they'll tell him, you know, do that again. But, you know, someone like 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 Finn or Noah was laughing because they were just like they couldn't believe that you said that. Um, so you're going to have to do that again. And then it would be like a note to us all to just like whatever he says. Just don't laugh. Whatever the reaction is, don't laugh. Um, <laughs> but he when he starts laughing, that's when, you know, like if you've made him laugh, like you feel like on top of the world. It's amazing. The, the best, one of the favorite part of, of, you know, when they show up to Susie's house is when Mike opens, the door opens up and he gets the arrow, the, the suction cup arrow. <laughs> right? Yeah, right there. Right there, Was there like 10 brothers and sisters? Oh, I lost, I forget Something how many like there were. That. So was like, they were everywhere. Like. And I away, think... open the door and also he... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, he knew immediately what he was in for. 
I feel like with that. Um, uh, no, I've seen people make videos about how even that, along with theories that people have with the show, how the siblings that Susie has s predict um, like certain events that happen throughout the rest of the season. Um, there's one part where one of the sisters is like being filmed with like, there's like blood and guts and it like perfectly matches Eddie. It's wild. Eddie at the end of the season. Um, and they put it like side by side and like a lot of the things that end up happening are like super similar. There's two uh, siblings, twins that are sword fighting with like night and and um you know like protection and armor on and oh, like it, it perfectly matches when they they go back and 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 eddie's in the camouflage and so is dustin it's wild wow that's right i'm gonna have to yeah. watch that but yeah now i remember then they're fighting the sword yeah uh, i know yeah. they had said that uh apparently vecna might have been since the beginning so they were saying there's little things you can watch go back to the first season they say you hear a clock in clock the and the demogorgon goes like they don't got tell, tell they don't have mental powers. Then who uh, opened the door? And the theory was it was him. I would Threw believe it. that knowing knowing the writers and the duffers, I feel like everything is as much as they add to the show based off of what fans and and viewers say. They also have had such a, a specific plan from day one that nobody knows but them. And I feel like they're they're on their way to executing everything that they set out to do in the very beginning. It blows my mind. Yeah. Well, okay, you know, this is 86. Susie's a teenager. Where would you see Susie in modern times? <laughs> in modern times. This is so interesting. I feel like I would see her you know, taking after her older sister, Eden, a lot more than she does in season four. Um, I feel like she's she's right at that moment. She's right at that place where like, she's about to become like a totally different person. Um, and, you know, I feel like it'd be so interesting to see her, you know, modern, you know, modern days be like emo or goth, um, but definitely still, you know, if that's where Eden's at, she would still, Susie would definitely be like in debate club and she would be hacking, not, uh, you know, maybe she'd be hacking, not you know, student files on a, a really old computer, but like she'd be doing it like she'd have systems like through her phone even. Um, I feel like, um, especially like, you know, she'd have her fun. She'd have her fun, especially with how much technology has advanced and how into it she seems to be. I feel did like... You, did you see yeah. us still with, with, with Dustin? All these having some kind of friendship with him? Oh, yes. I feel like with that, I feel like with that, they set up like a lot of couples in the show that just seem so, so like end game, like per se. I feel like you know, having Susie and Dustin's song be the never-ending story, I feel like they have a never-ending story. It's never the end. It's never the end for them, I feel like. Um, if they do bring you back, how would you like to see, like, an interaction face-to-face -face with the group and actually be with Dustin? Yeah, and all yeah of them? We, we want to see you, uh, in, uh, Susie, interact with a few of the groups. Yeah, we've seen a few, but we haven't seen you with, yeah. Like, how would she react to, to Eleven when she would see what Eleven can do? Oh my gosh. I feel like her world would like shatter just a little bit. I feel like she is, you know, not as sheltered as she seems. And for as scientific as she is, I feel like she would try and find rationale behind everything. And I think like some of it just can't be explained. Like some of it is just like, you know it's just wild and it it is what it is at face value like you know she's a yeah. kid with superpowers like that's all yeah. there is es um, especially given no spoilers for anybody who hasn't seen the end of season four given the state of hawkins i yeah. don't think you, can explain, you can't explain that rationally <laughs> what's coming yeah. down from this guy what's happening i think that if i had to 
choose where I would be going from here, I would want to, I would want to be one of the characters that ends up coming back to help Hawkins out. I feel like, um, I feel like, especially with how, how odd everything is in, in Hawkins where the show was left off, you know, Susie can't just be sitting around, you know, not knowing what's going on anymore. I feel like she's got to play a little bit more of an active role. If it was up to me, if it was up to me. Right. But I, 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 I think I, after, I that, after that scene from season three, I think she's become a, a fan favorite. That, that oh, well, never ending, I, I think the never ending story, mm-hmm. I think really kind of made her like, okay. So then we got to see more, but again, finally get to see her interact with, uh, was, uh, was it Mike? Yeah. Uh, Will and Jonathan and Argyle. So we'll maybe see, I uh, would like to see her interact more. Yes. Yeah. I hope so too. I really hope so too, because the people that she has technically interacted with are none of the people that I would have expected face to face. Um, they said, oh, they, they told me when I was coming in for season four, they were like, oh my gosh, and you're finally going to, we, we haven't even gotten to tell you yet that you're going to have scenes face to face with a person. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get to be with Gate and I'm going to get to, Susie's going to get to be with Dustin. They were like, no, no. What? <laughs> I was like, oh, then who who is she going to know? <laughs> um, so yeah, very interesting that of all people, Dustin has not had a scene yeah. with her in person yet. I feel like that's got to happen. I like, the, happen. I like how they do that when they're like, okay, we need help. We know somebody in Utah. Yeah. Or they knew she was the one they needed to go to. It's always, I feel like it's always going to be, well, we know someone in Utah. Um, I feel like at, at this point, she's got to, she's got to move her way on over to Indiana and help out. <laughs> if it was, if it, you know, in my dream scenario. Mm-hmm. Well, you I know, saw- her, her, Susa, her sister and Argyle, what a way to find him in the van. I <laughs> look, know. Look, I discovered Transformers. The toys has a line called the collaboration line where they do crossover toys. They did like done Ghostbusters, uh, Spy, uh, X Men, Back to the Future, GI Joe, Stranger Things. Oh. There is a Transformer, Stranger Things Transformer. It's the van. Oh my goodness! Of course, Gotta of course. Of uh, all things, so it's, it's not not going to be Steve's car or. Something else, some other vehicle. It's the oh, pizza wow. van. It's got to be the van. It's got to be the van. That is so perfect. I love that. You know or, what? I'm going to. I'm going to have to look that up now. There's so many things that, especially day to day, when I'm just going about whatever I'm doing, something online or I'm looking something up. Stranger Things does. You know come up so much in pop culture that there's not a day where I don't see some sort of reference to it, which is honestly amazing. It's it's such a, a huge show. We're getting cast in, when you got cast for it, was it, you know, exciting and any intimidation or something so hugely popular? Yeah. I, well, I would say definitely, I was, I was definitely excited, but absolutely intimidated too. Um, just because the world of, of Stranger Things is so huge and the, the fan base is so massive. it I feel like everyone I know, you know, would be seeing me. Whereas work that I had worked on beforehand, I didn't know if that was going to necessarily be the case. Um, but yeah, I feel like immediately I I felt like there was a huge responsibility that I had to you know, making the the stuff that I was a part of as as good as I possibly could and as memorable as I possibly could. And at the end of the day, I feel like it was just so exciting to get to do it with Gaten as my as my first time being on the show, getting to like sing a song with Gaten and uh, um, you know, kind of go back to both of our Broadway roots and you know, get to work with each other it was just so special and I feel like it definitely eased a lot of the like pressure that I had felt previously about showing up on the show um he immediately made it so easy for me to feel welcome and right at home and it was it was really perfect in a way that I couldn't have imagined but I'm glad it happened the way that it did because he's he's just the best 
I, I don't think I can't remember if it was the first time you were on the show or the second time, but they had threw you a surprise party or something. I remember hearing about that. Yes. Or, yeah. Yes. That was so much fun. Once again, I feel like there's this trend where I'm always working on a holiday or my birthday, but hmm. specifically with my birthday, um, I turned 18 on set for season four okay. when uh, I was working like that, that entire, you know, few weeks that I was there, um, I was turning 18 and that's a huge uh, age in the film industry specifically just because of hours that no longer apply. Um, you know, suddenly I'm not a kid and I don't have to be like, um, ushered off of set by like a certain hour of the night and I can just work as much as they need. And, um, I don't have to go to school on set. And so people were very excited about that. All of a sudden, uh, halfway through Noah was still going to tutoring and I didn't have to anymore. And Noah and Priya and, and all the other kids who were younger than me were still like, oh, come on. <sighs> and I like suddenly was like, sorry, guys, I was. You graduated that portion of it. Yeah. Bye. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got over and uh, I like I was with Caleb and Gayton and all the other older kids. They were like, oh, it feels nice like this, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> so <laughs> it was super fun to get to be there for my birthday. And they they I didn't even know that they knew that it was my birthday. I had assumed maybe like from paperwork, they probably would have, but I hadn't said anything and nobody had said anything. And it was at the very end of the day. Um, so it, I, it was a total surprise and I hadn't expected it because they did such a great job at not even, you know, letting on a little bit of a hint that it was going to happen. And then all of a sudden there was cake there was uh, yard games. There, it was the whole lawn of Susie's house uh, was just like a fun, you know, backyard type uh, party and cookout. And it was so fun. It was so special. It was great because I was only there for such a small amount of time and they still went to that much of a, a, a length to be as considerate and, and as, as fun and welcoming as they were. It was really such a great thing. Yeah. Um, Couldn't have had it any other way. Yeah. Let's see. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, um, before the strike and everything, I know the first time you said you had to um, work on another project. Is it something you can talk about now or not yet that you were working on? I have been working on a lot of other projects. A lot of them are actually either voiceover jobs that uh, – have to do with new animated shows that are going to be super, super fun. Uh, and a lot of them are, are like short films, uh, you know, and a lot of it has been really interesting to get to work on or specifically like one episode of certain shows. Um, it's been so great getting to do those. Not many of them, most of them are still either, you know, just starting up again or are still in, you know, the post editing process. Um, but I'm so excited for them to be out, um, especially because I feel like a lot of what the strike, you know, was meant to do was to, you know, kind of put a, a hold on all of that. And as important as that was, you know, um, having everything suddenly be worked on again is, is just exciting for me because it's closer to when people actually get to see it. Um, so yeah, I'm very, I'm very excited about that. And a lot of the work that I do do as well has to either do with, with writing, uh, scripts or, um, also just traveling and, and seeing things and showing up at certain events for Stranger Things press, um, or for Pretty Little Liars. Um, so a lot of that is, is super fun too, because I feel like, I have the opportunity to go and see places that I would have otherwise maybe never have gotten to see. Um, so that's always so much fun for me too. I feel like I get the opportunity to do so much through, you know, the, the work that people seem to enjoy so much. Um, and it, it's just really gratifying to get to be a part of that. 
and be with all the other people who are a part of that. And, and of course, um, Pretty Little Lies original sin is coming back for a yes. second season. Oh, is there going to be uh, any more flashbacks with you in that, or you, oh, you're not going to be part of that? So I can't necessarily say yet, but Angela's family and a lot of their story is definitely not over yet. It's definitely still a part of the show and at the root of a lot of the conflict in the show. And I'm excited for people to, to get to see that um, because it's definitely not completely resolved. It's definitely not finished yet. Yeah. Definitely, of course, no spoilers, but the way it ended, it's like, yeah, it's not done. There's got to be. No, no, he it. shows up at their door, this this like, killer that mm -hmm. it's so similar to like any of the 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 slasher type killers from the 80s. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. And the guy that they have doing that is such a, a, a incredible like stunt person and uh, actor as well. It's wild. It's wild. He's so tall um and it, it's just incredible to see how some of that is made um from being on set with with all of the different people who work on the stunts for that show it's really cool i, I think having a good tall person playing a killer is really good we saw that with kane hodder who's what six five yeah Tyler Maine played michael in the remake and he's even taller. Man, I felt like Frodo Baggins next to Gandalf in the picture when I stood next to him. He's like freaking tall, yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's usually how I feel with most people. So especially <laughs> when I'm next to them, it's like even more of a height difference and it's wild. Yes. Um, yeah. No, I love it. It's, it's, so it's, it's interesting to see people when you meet them in person, they might even be shorter or taller than you think. Anyway, you can never tell. And then yes. you're next it's a and um, it was funny, like when I met, was Seth Green at that Spookella you were at or was that a different one? Yes. He yes. Your, I can't remember yes. if he was at your one. Like, it's so funny. Like, I was like, I didn't know he's short, but uh, I didn't know he was at. It was funny when he came out on the table, he's standing up and he, he was great. So who, who, have you, that. Um, who have you met at conventions that you never thought you'd get a chance to meet, but being a guest there that you've got to either sit next to them or meet them on your spare time? Ooh. There are so many people. There are so many people. Um, specifically at certain conventions. What's really cool is that I got to meet Mara Wilson at a convention who was the Matilda. Matilda in the movie Matilda. And I was Matilda on Broadway. So like a lot of people with connections to work that I've already done, um, which is so exciting. And uh Oh my goodness, I am super close friends now with the original voice of Dora the Explorer, Ooh. Um, which is wild because I feel like specifically for me, that was such a staple of like what was playing in my house as a child. And she grew up not far from where I grew up. So knowing that like made me so excited and that was through a convention and now we see each other at everything and it's so exciting um and another person who i was able to become really close with through conventions was uh amy uh who was at um spookala who is the body of megan the the doll from megan oh, the movie yeah <laughs> yes so it is it is so fun because she always shows up. I think we went to a total of like four or three or four uh, events this year together. And it was so exciting because I feel like we always end up running into each other that now we talk to each other on the regular and like check our schedules with each other to see if we're going to be showing up at any of the same places. Um, so it's just so much fun. I feel like a lot of the people that I meet at conventions, um, who, you know, I'm always super excited to meet end up becoming like series regulars in my life, um, which is so much fun and definitely stuff that I never would have imagined. Because aside from being really cool people that I talk to a lot now, they're also like, I forget just how incredible people, incredible people they are and what what massive effect they have had on pop culture. 
um, in so many different areas because a lot of the events that I go to, yes, they're to do with horror, but, you know, there's some people that, you know, have never worked in horror and it's so exciting to see, you know, them show up at conventions too. And look at some of the ones who started off in horror. Oh, yeah. over here. Kevin Bacon, mm -hmm. Johnny yeah. Depp. It's yeah. Like, oh. It's amazing. It's amazing. I feel like it makes me so excited because so much of the stuff that I have worked on has a really like um, horror type aspect to it. And I've seen that create so many incredible things. And I feel like it's exciting to be on that same route as, you know, going from being a child actor to now being an adult actor. Um, it's just, it's a really, it's a really great and exciting thing seeing just how much, um, <laughs> for as much as critics um, and and people tend to not pay attention to horror as much as they sometimes I feel should, um, mm. how much of like our lives it has created uh, just by, you know, everything that it has done that has been so incredible. The whole community is great, regardless the actors in it or the fans, yes. everybody together. Horror people are the best people. And like people, I think, oh, they're weird or they're going to do, it's not, you'd be surprised. I mean, they, I mean, we become the best of friends, do stuff for, you know, we're like the best people to be around. It's like, yeah, you don't know what you're missing. I mean, there's worse people out there. It's like, yeah, it's probably some people who don't know what they're missing out. I mean, it's just a great community to be a part of. So. Honestly. I, I show up at these conventions and I see so many little kids um, at these at these horror conventions even that are just strictly for like really scary adult things. Um, yeah. And they're already so like a part of this group that, you know, some of their parents or, you know, other relatives or other friends are a part of. And I feel like what, what people who are, are into horror, like, you know, don't necessarily get a, as much credit for as they do. They're so they're so welcoming and so nice for as terrifying as the stuff that we love is. It's like it's mm -hmm. such a nice little group of people who understand each other. It's amazing. I love and, it. And some of the writing is incredible. Again, not just Stranger Things, Train to Busan. Yes. That, which has absolutely incredible writing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and and performances. So but yeah. horror never really got gets its real um, proper attention, unless it, some, somebody wants to to bash it. <laughs> Did you see? Yeah. Um, I I can't remember if it was Fox News. There was some um, you can see like on YouTube or TikTok. There was a report saying like, yeah, I went to the theater and there's um, a wonderful uh, it's a wonderful knife and Thanksgiving. And he's like bashing the horror movies. This is what society has come to. It's like what is this Silent Night, Deadly Night? Like it's not the first Christmas horror movie. Like you just want to complain about something new. Well, that'll make more people see it now. Like oh okay, all right, a horror movie and you're back. Let's well, go. What gets yeah. me though is Silent Night, Deadly Night got bashed for the whole guy dressed up as Santa killing people. Okay, that's 84. Hmm. Let's go back a few years to 1980. Christmas Evil. Christmas Evil. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. also, I like to point out, whenever you watch the documentaries and they talk about what happened with Silent Night, Deadly Night, you see the mothers. That movie is bad. Not going to ruin my kid. You not once do you see a father going, that movie's yeah. bad. My boy's messed up. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I feel like I, I love, I love that horror is is such a community for people i just wish that people and even if they are starting to i wish that people recognized it more it's it's so great it's so great you know it's just there, there, there is a film called um clay clay zombies oh yeah since you like christmas stuff i was gonna say i was yeah they, gonna it, totally it, forgot we got and you like you like stop motion claymation Yes, yes. Clay Zombies is this movie where people, if you if you touch this green clay, touch the clay, you're gonna have a bad day. They turn into they clay turn zombies. to Clay Zombies, and he. We interviewed him what two weeks ago? About two weeks ago, yeah. Mm -hmm. And literally, all the characters, the zombies, all of these clay, he had to animate them all, and he did a Christmas special, which is on YouTube oh now. Oh my you can watch it. And it's, you know. 
again, it's better than this. It's a Christmas, Christmas, Christmas and Claymation, which, by the way, is still greatest Christmas movie uh, special or whatever. Uh, uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. I was watching that just last night with my friends. I love that. Oh yeah. my gosh. I'm going to have to look that up. Um, yeah, I, I'm so into that. I'm so into that. Um, it sounds, it sounds very intriguing. I'm going to, uh, I think though, when it comes to horror, horror, a uh, holiday themed horror, certain horror, uh, certain holidays are sacred. Christmas right. is one. So when you start getting mixed with Santa and stuff, people are going to be like, Santa sleigh with Goldberg. That's a good one. Right, that right. Right. Like yes. And um, David Harbour from Stranger Things just did um, Violent Night. Violent Night. Yeah. Right, like last year. I yeah. saw that too. I saw oh, that. He was too. great in that. that. That was great. He was so funny. He was oh, so great. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, yeah, definitely. But I feel like also um, there, are, there are certain movies that have, been based around holidays you know stemming back like a long while back that you know some of them are really great some of them are really great well uh, speaking of david we're seeing him he's he's now part of the marvel cinematic universe yeah he's going to be doing a uh, thunderbolts is the movie right thunderbolts yeah I think so. if, 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 would you like to be like would you be into doing something like that stepping into that the hero universe and if so is there any like character from the, the the superhero universe you would like to you know play you know i love a lot of the stories that have to do with dc um but with marvel i love like um storm and like a lot of like like doctor strange is so fun um and i love like um like all the new stuff that they have coming out that doesn't like Loki the show, like mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff that they're doing um, that's not strictly movie related is so is so brilliant and so fun. Um, and I feel like I would love to be a part of something like that. Um, I feel like especially with a lot of the shows and and movies recently in Marvel, you know, I'd love to be a part of one of the ones that, that really takes off. And I'd love to be a, a character that, like, fights for something really specific or has a really specific fun power. Um, well, yeah. yeah. We're bringing X-Men 97 out. Yeah. I, I yeah. got to see the action figure. It looks like she's going to have the mohawk. I swear it looks like she has the mohawk. It's I'm I'm really excited for a lot of the new stuff that's coming up especially now that strike is over and people are back at work. There's a lot of really great stuff that's going to be coming about. And I just, I'm excited for the stuff that I, I am a part of. And I'm also super excited to see what else it, like lies ahead, I guess. Um, it's really, it's a, it's a really exciting time. For um, the X-Men, I just had, I know you said you like Storm, but you can play Jubilee maybe. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, you know she does become a, a vampire. Uh, yeah. I what she loses what she loses her powers and then becomes a vampire. Anything, anything, anything mm -hmm. would be so much fun. I feel like eleven, like eleven type powers, like eleven's yeah. a superhero, and in the Stranger Things world, I feel like. Uh, <laughs> I would love to just be a part of any cinematic universe and have powers. Um, cause I got to do that on stage a couple of times actually. Um, but never in film. And I would love, I would love for that to be the case. That would be very fun. And Matilda has some telekinetic powers. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> on stage, on stage, I did get to do that. And that was very fun. It was very fun. So how is it uh, since you were about to this is can't talk now Matilda there we go um, <laughs> seeing those effects when you were that age playing and stuff and uh, how was that like working with that um, to see behind the scenes how it was done how was that for you it was so it was so, it was honestly very secretive especially because we were such little kids um, they didn't want anyone specifically uh, telling show secrets so a lot of the times the kids weren't even told exactly how things worked um mm -hmm. when it came to like how uh powers happened 
Um, but the Matildas specifically did know, um, right. just for our own safety. Um, and so getting to work with a lot of that from, you know, it's, I think I was nine, 10. Um, it was, it was very interesting having that, that type of responsibility because especially with live work, there's, there's a lot that if you mess it up once in, in film, you can go back to one and like mm -hmm. reshoot and do it over again. Yep. Um, a lot of the stuff like on stage, you know, obviously you can't, but yeah. what a lot of people don't realize is like a lot of other actors and crew members like um safety depends on you doing it right every time and especially being such a young kid like i was very interested in the work that i was doing that had to do with you know a lot of specific coordination because there was a lot of it um and it was really interesting to see how everything worked a lot of a lot of the stuff in the show was uh based on like magnets, um, which is wild um, to make like telekinesis look like it was happening. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of really basic concepts that they had broken down and explained to us uh, as kid actors. And it was really cool to get to be a part of, um, especially because they weren't afraid of, uh, you know, explaining everything in detail, even if they knew we might not understand it. You know, it was they they would explain it as best they could and even break it down more to be sure that we knew exactly what we were doing to make sure that we were secure and safe. It was really cool. And I do know, like, you know, messing up a line can be horrible for a, on a stage production because I was in high school. I did stage crew and we mm -hmm. had to go. We would do I think we were doing a Shakespeare or, or might have been uh, all town of my town, whatever that was. And she she messed up a line. And we got told to stay away from her afterwards. Because she was severely devastated, and said she, no one. They were trying to talk to her, and they're like, "Stay away from her." She's just, she was crying nonstop. Really? Oh just my goodness! Mess the line up. So it's like, oh yeah, it can be, it can be bad to mess a line up on a person. Yeah. yeah, and also just specifically on the show, there's there's with shows, there's so many cues professionally, especially in Matilda. Um, that have to happen on certain lines. And if they're not said correctly, then the the thing doesn't happen. Um, and there's a lot of funny stories about mishaps, especially because the kids were so young that they had cast. Um, you know, a lot of kid mishaps and, and silly mistakes um, that ended up turning into totally different, you know, events in the story to work its way back into what was originally supposed to happen. Um, so yeah, a lot of really cool, or a lot of really cool stuff that, you know, had to happen and ended up happening. And I love that uh, we were treated like competent, like people um, who who had a job to do, even though they were very great about also keeping like the integrity of us being little kids um, and 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 making sure that that was preserved as well. There, there uh, is a there's a movie, a musical. With an entire kids act, Bugsy Malone. Oh, okay. Uh, it, it had um. Oh, what's her name in it? She was in uh, Silence of the Lamb. She played Clarice. Clarice. Oh, Jodie Foster. Yeah. As a kid. And the entire okay, some of the singing it wasn't them because you can hear the adult, and it's really cool and how they kill each other. Cream right. pie. Cream pie. Is it um? Is it the movie from '76? I believe so. It's uh, her and Scott Baio. Okay. Yeah, that? yeah. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna look into this one too. It's on my list. That yeah. would be that would be that that would uh be uh an interesting musical to do live as a as a, as a live musical. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. All the kids. It's a. Hey man, it, it would be a cool one to do as a musical because it's all kids having to act like adults like in, in, in the prohibition era. Mm, interesting. It would, it would also be messy because again, cream pie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is really interesting. I'm intrigued. 
I'm intrigued. I love mm -hmm. adaptations, so maybe one day. Maybe one day. If they're not doing a live musical on that, that that'd be a crime because again, okay, it'd be a bit of a pain because it's no adult whatsoever in the cast. Yeah. It'd yeah. Be all kids. Interesting. Interesting. I have so I have so many things on my list now uh, to watch and see and do. Yeah. Um, have you seen Repo the Genetic Opera? Have you watched that? <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. I know of it. Yes. I know uh, of it. Great. Yeah, yeah. And um, Anthony Stewart Head, who's the repo man in it, he was actually, I can't remember if it was before the movie came out or if it was after, but he was Frankenfooter and um, Rocky Horror Picture Show over the UK. And he actually sang oh, Sweet God. Transvestite at a Buffy convention that I yeah. met him at. I think <laughs> it was after Buffy. So. Well, no, no, I, no, it was before Buffy, but no, he was just singing at a convention yeah. at, uh, at the after party. And I told him, I'm like, I go, I don't know who did it. I mean, because Tim Curry, obviously, you know, he's the best, you yeah. know, you can't beat Tim Curry. But I was like, I don't know who's better. That, that was just so much. He's like, oh, no. He's like, no. He's like, thank you. But nobody beats Tim Curry. So I was like, okay. Yeah. But, <laughs> but look, look at that cast. You got him. Uh, Paris Hilton. Uh, yeah. Bill Mosley. Bill Mosley. The um, lead singer of um, Skinny um, Puppy. Uh, and, his, um, his name is hard to, hard to say, but yeah. And uh, Paul, was it Paul Savino? Yeah. And what's her name? She was in uh, Spy Kids. Alexa uh, Vega. So She was supposed to be at Spooky Empire, unfortunately canceled. Um, then, yeah. at, And then just before COVID had hit, uh, Paul Serino was supposed to be at a convention, but he didn't go. And then he had passed away not too long after. I was like, oh, I wish I could have met him. That would have mm. been. I hate, I hate that. Like it. Like if I miss a convention and I've actually, I've met people who have passed away, which I'm glad I've met, but it's just like, you never know. And it's like, Oh, right. favorite song. And that is what you see, what things you see in a graveyard mm -hmm. when she meets, when uh, she meets the, 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 the guy who's stealing the plot from the body to make the drugs. Great, grave digger. Yeah. Grave digger. And she's like Zyber, him, that's when, song. Yeah. When he's telling them to be quiet, he's screaming out and he's not spelting these loud lyrics out. She's like, Turn it down, turn it down, not so loud. <laughs> <laughs> that is so awesome. And then um, there's the song that uh, Paris Hilton sings um, that was cut out from the movie, too. Uh, there's a deleted song. I can't think of what it's called right now. But if you like type in deleted songs from Repo, it's a deleted scene that she sings a song. In it there. I have certain Repo songs on my uh, playlists that I listen to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. I love it so much. What horror movie do you think they should make a musical of? Ooh, but they haven't already. Hmm. Actually, I, I think know. Nightmare on Elm Street might be interesting. That <laughs> would be really interesting. Like dream sequences. <laughs> yeah, and um, I would. I have to say they've made so many Stephen King. They made Carrie an adaptation, but they haven't made that many other musical adaptation of Stephen King. And it's wild because there's so many movie adaptations and mm -hmm. it has so many stories. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like one of those, you know, you got you got so much to work with. The you stand got, would be funny seeing Randall Flagg sing. I could just imagine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm uh, sure. There's so much that you could do. There's so much that you could do. There's also, like if we're talking like newer stuff, I've seen people talk about turning anything Jordan Peele into a musical. I've seen people like AI generate and construct what the sets would look like. And it looks so interesting. Um, I saw someone make Us, the movie, um, into a, a stage play. It was really interesting. It was really mm -hmm. interesting. Um, and it was just a concept, but you know, it looked so cool. I feel like a lot of new horror is also really, really great. He wouldn't sing in it, but a Terrifier musical would be funny since Leah sang Clown Cafe, maybe a little bit more. <laughs> that is so true. And he could just honk the horn. This. The <laughs> Terrifier, the musical? I should I should mention that to Damien and be like, hey, my cousin does music. You want to think of a Terrifier musical? <laughs> or a that shorty. That would be so good. Or oh, even yeah. a short or something of like a musical segment or something. Well, 
Oh but my god. You I'm not saying art would I'm not saying art would sing, but hey, like, you could technically do that with hey, you could technically turn the mean one into a musical. I mean oh. given the whole you're good, he, you're a mean one, Mr. Oh, he Grinch. Totally could. He totally could. I'm plugging my computer in as we speak. Um, but speaking speaking of Terrifier, um, I'm I'm so excited for Terrifier three too. And it's gonna be a Christmas uh set. I, I saw I what? saw that's so interesting. Yeah. That is so interesting to me. Um I my family was at a convention where everyone was at, and it was one that I wasn't able to be at. And they had a um, specific poster that they were handing out. And I have it. They got it for me. <laughs> and since I couldn't be there with them, and I have it hung up in my apartment back at school. And it's, oh, my gosh. It's so great. It's so yeah. great. I think that was the recent one or whatever. Is it the for Terrifier 3 or it's a one for the one that's already been out? For Terrifier 3. Okay, um, yeah, because I heard about that, how they're, they were having, like, limited posters of a new, yeah, for Terrifier 3. Yes, my family got one of them. It, er, looks, so, <laughs> it looks so good. It's it's going to be a wild Christmas. It's going to be a wild Christmas. They have a they have a, something really scary happening to Santa on the poster. So, <laughs> well, interesting I, to see. I, I, I'm intrigued by it because the first movie, you know, was a, you know, it's a violent movie. Second one topped it. Second one was just like there were times where the jaw just hit the ground. Second like, one was wild. That, that was scene so where he's wild. where he's skin to and he's picking the meat off her and the mother walks in. And she's standing yeah. there like, and then all of a sudden you hear, Mommy. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh. She would have passed uh, out from the pain. That's I, I want to <laughs> see what they're going to do in the third one. I am so intrigued. So there's like it's some bad. people saying, I'm sure you've seen the little trailer tease of it, right? You've watched it with the girl coming down the stairs. Yes. Okay. Well, there's like some people are saying like the girl could be like a young Sienna and it's like a, either a dream sequence or a memory or how somehow how she's connected because you know, they're connected somehow with the father. Like there's all these. Different yeah. Things. So like maybe um, that's her when she was younger. Or so. <laughs> I never thought yeah. of that. So. Ooh, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, that that trailer teaser also hit some controversy. Some people think that the kid's gonna, but we don't know that just because there's yeah, no because we, yeah, we see the kid go down, and then all of a sudden we see him eating blood, he's eating cookies, and so people are going off. Oh my god, he killed a kid again! Not kids have been killed in movies in the past, so it's like, come on. But. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm I'm interested to see whatever it well, is in its finality. Yes, and Damien, he's just amazing at that. I mean, it's, and I guess he wants to do a fourth one. I think he said he wanted to do four of them. So I think that after that, so that'll like wrap yeah. it all up. And, but so. that's going to be perfect. Yeah. That's going to be perfect. Uh, I'm I excited. <laughs> I forget yeah. if it comes out in September or October next year, but there is a date for it though, it's for the release. I'm going to, I know so many people who are going to be like first in line. I know so many people who are You're like, including myself, I'm going to be there. Including myself, you will see me there. You will see me there. You will see me there. Uh, David's <laughs> like the most awesome person. It's so weird. Like he's just like nothing like that. But when he puts the makeup on, it's just like, it's so weird seeing him out of makeup and in makeup. And it's just, Yeah. So. Yeah. I got, I got a picture of him. They did a photo op with him as Art the Clown. So me and my friend, we got a picture with him like, yes. <laughs> well, there's, a, so there's, a, there's a cool video of him and he's having his makeup put on for Art. At the same time, because Sid Hag, Hedge was still alive. Uh, they were together. They're, they're, they're putting the makeup on for Captain Spaulding. Oh, my and God. And Avira has a short she did of her running around being chased by Art. Wow. <laughs> wow. That is amazing. I saw that. Oh. They were at the same convention. Yeah, they were at the same convention, like, yeah, when the first Terrifier was out. Well, okay, go, going back to um, Stranger Things, we've seen a lot of you know oh. evil monsters, Vecna, the Mind Fearer, the the Demo Dog, the Demon Hawks. Yeah. And the, uh, what one would you think is the, in your opinion, the most frightening for you? Ooh, I don't know. I feel like Vecna's at the at the center of it all. 
I feel like Vecna's at the center of it all. So for me, he's the scariest by far. Yeah. And then, oh my gosh, the stuff he does like with with people like there's there's no way you can escape. Like you could run away from a Demogorgon. You can't run away you know, from. We Vecna. we can see Eddie was freaking out when he lifts Chrissy up. Yeah, yeah good reason to freak out. All of a sudden, everything's just cracking and popping. Uh, he doesn't got to be in the yeah. same world as you, and he can get you. Yeah. It's like yeah. when I first saw that episode when that happened, I'm like, okay, from sci fi, it just went strictly to horror now. After that, that was wild. Wild. Everyone, everyone I know was so shocked at that. Um, you know, I think that, especially because it's the the end of this this storyline with the show it's the end of stranger things just in and of itself mm -hmm. uh with this next season like and you know vecna is is so much of the conflict leading up to the end of the season you know he's kind of got to be the big baddie like i feel like he's he's definitely the most terrifying most threatening to me uh just just as a viewer it's like um, the, it's like the big bad in the buffy seasons he's the big bad yeah 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 no he is he is and then he has full ownership over it. Like Jamie, uh, who plays him, is so great. So great. Mm -hmm. Full ownership over that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the, the videos of uh, uh, videos of him and um, the guy that plays Eddie, where he's like apologizing. Joseph, like, yeah. you know, he's like, I'm apologizing. And he walks off because I got a gift for you. Walks off camera, comes back with the wreath. He's like, here, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, and they're they're pretty close in real life too, which is <laughs> I love that. Um, I was at a convention with them in Paris, and uh, they they were just hanging out, having such a great time with each other. And um, everyone else uh, who were just fans of the show were like, "Is this really happening right now?" And they were just like having coffee together. And then people were like, "Is this real?" Oh my goodness! Yay! <laughs> Maybe there is hope. <laughs> oh, they're, they're, they're friends. All... He brought them back. Vecna will take care of them. There's yeah, one, one so video. I, uh, one video I came across because the characters, the, the 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 monsters, are named after things from Dungeons and Dragons, which of course you know, right. big part of it. So they're like, well, you know, Vecna had this one general guy who died and came back as a vampire. People. So then they're going, well, maybe Eddie could come back as a vampire. I'm like, oh, please no. No. <laughs> I like vampires, but in Stranger Things, no. Please no. Just no. 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 Might be weird to see. Yeah. That that would be something for sure. Um, and I've, I've heard so many people come up to me and ask me if that's going to happen. And the more they talk about it, like they're so invested in this theory. I, I don't know. I don't know. Are, are, are they uh, the the brothers? Are they actually D and D fans? Because D and D is a big part of Stranger Things. Yeah, yeah, it really is, and I I do think that they are. I do think that they are, and especially a lot of the cast members are as well. Um, I know that uh, specifically with me, I play D and D, um, and it's it's been such an interesting time seeing how how huge it's become in you know not only like like um specifically with the games culture like like people who love playing the game but like now everyone knows what it is everyone knows it and has probably played at least one one round one campaign like it's so it's so interesting seeing how much it's affected uh you know even kids today now are are really into it and and trying it because of of stranger things um, I love that it's not just becoming, uh, you know, uh, something that's specifically 80s or, you know, rebranded in the 90s or coming back in the 2000s. Like it is it is still very relevant. Yeah. Still I think that, that Stranger Things is actually helping to revive some things, you know, get people interested in things, not just D&D, &D, maybe even, you know, the old music. Yeah. Never ending story. People are going, the song. Hmm. What, what, what? I never heard the song before. And. With me, yeah. I haven't seen the movie in years, but now because the song has been popping up on my radar a lot, mm -hmm. I feel as if some unseen force telling me, watch it, watch it. Yeah, need to watch but <laughs> if I get to the, If I get to the horse scene, it's going to be skip. Fast forward. <laughs> Forget oh, that. yeah. No, fast forward through that. Fast forward through that. You just can't emotionally handle that. Have you seen, the, have you seen the sequels and the TV show? No, that I have not. 
I didn't I, even know the. I didn't even know there was a TV show that I got told by one of the guys in chat, Mister Bones. You know there was a TV show. That's what? right. I forgot there was. Yeah. <laughs> But See, I, I have heard of all of them. I believe once I may have seen the second. Or the movie. last five minutes, maybe. <laughs> or the last five minutes. Or the last five minutes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I I can't say that I've seen the TV show. Yeah, I don't think I remember. I, yeah. I, I'm not sure. But um, I feel like, especially with that, it's just, it's such a good, especially uh, the, uh, Shark Boy and Lava Girl was a big movie with my generation and it literally is like a modern retelling of the never ending story in concept it really is hmm. and i think it's so funny because um people people will come up to me and they'll be like that song you wrote for the show stranger things it's so good and i i have to go okay first of all thank you so much <laughs> But I did not write that song. Um, it's actually a movie. And if you like Shark Boy and Lava Girl, go back. It's really, really similar. They took a lot of roots from that. And uh, Never Ending Story is the original. So you should definitely go watch that. Um, and so I always I always end up going to recommend people to it. Um, it's so fun. It's so fun. And then a lot of people who are my parents' age remember it and remember seeing it. And so I love that, too. It's so great. To so be... Yeah. yeah. Never ending. So it is a never ending. Is, it's never ending. People will always see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They lived up to their name because they truly found a way to be massively popular yet once again. Let's hope in like 30 years, there's another show that does a really great version of it. And then, <laughs> and then it'll keep going. It will keep going. Mm -hmm. And the scene with the nothing too. That's always remembered. So like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So great. So okay. great. I have a whole uh, list of things that I'm going to go back and, and watch and do now. Yeah. yeah. I and mean, I'll let you know if I think of any other good things for you to check out. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely let so me know. Just, just stay away from a TV show called The Great American Hero. <laughs> totally great, exactly. great, great theme song. <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm walking on air. Uh, <laughs> great. Terrible TV show. <laughs> William Katz, yeah. Well, who was in the I, movie, I, um, House? Yeah. Have you seen House? Yes. Okay, that's yes. him. He's the greatest American hero. So yeah. It's a terrible, oh, okay. terrible, terrible TV show. One, basically, the whole plot of it is a teacher for the, the bad kids. Okay. He's got one student who wants to beat him up. Another student wants to sleep with him. He's given a power suit that gives him special powers. Told, here's the manual. Don't lose it. Five minutes later after they leave. Do you still got the manual? Oh, terrible show! God. I tried to watch it. I, I couldn't even finish the first episode, and I'm like, "Oh God, it's terrible!" Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, but, well, note taken. Note taken. I will. I will just, stay clear just, for my own good. Just, just look up the theme song because it's a very catchy theme song. <laughs> okay, yeah. I will do that. I will do that. That's the one thing the '80s have, and Stranger Things catches with the soundtracks. Awesome music. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Such Have you seen any oh sorry, go ahead. Great time for music specifically. Mm -hmm. There's so many different genres emerging. It's so great. So great. Uh, music is so great for some reason. I got I was listening to I started looking up 80s music and I came across the song. It was an anti ran, I think it is. Oh by okay. Block of Seagulls. Oh, okay. That. Uh, uh, an, an interesting name for a group, Flock of Seagulls, huh. with weird hairdos and stuff. I love that. Absolutely. That's look cool. Up. Yeah, me too. Me too. Cool. I love that. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Flock of Seagulls. That's something new there. All right. Perfect. <laughs> Amazing. Growing up in Manhattan, I've seen so many of those. So yeah. great. <laughs> at least that's one thing Stranger Things didn't show us because back in the 80s, there was um, a lot of people trying different things with the hair. Yes. And so we're not really seeing that. So apparently in Hawkins, we didn't get to see, you know, whatever it was that flo flock of seagulls had. No mohawks. Yeah. Talk, no. About, talk about holes in the ozone. Blame the 80s. <laughs> yeah. 
When it took two Ooh. cans of, of hairspray a day just to do your hair. Mm. Hairspray is another good musical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> true. 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 Very true. Very true. I love that show. So, so many good shows. Yeah. Um, I guess, are you going to see the Wicked movie when that comes out? I guess it comes out next year or something. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I, I definitely am. I definitely am. Uh, one of the shows that I did on Broadway um, was in the theater that's attached to uh, where Wicked is running, the Gershwin Theater. Um, it's been running there for like maybe almost 20 years now. I was going to say 15, but they just had their 18th anniversary, I think. Um, yeah. So specifically with that, uh, there was the Gershwin Theater and a theater that's attached to it is Circle in the Square. It's in the same alley and um, they like you can there's tunnels underground to get to. Uh, in between the both of the theaters. Um, and so they were made to kind of be like partner theaters. Um, and I was working at Circle in the Square for years and years on a show. And so I would constantly, uh, they would invite the little kids to go back and trick or treat um, at Wicked. So a lot of a lot of the people at Wicked were always friends of mine and then ended up being, you know, either ensemble members or dancers in the movie. Um, just to pay homage to how many people they've had in that show throughout the years. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm definitely seeing Wicked when it comes out. Mm -hmm. um, I wish Adina Menzel theater. would be in it. but I, Do you I have any Pacific funny. theater that you really liked you know, performing in? More so mm. than the others? Yeah, I would say Circle in the Square was really great. It was really great. It's a theater that's um, it's the only Broadway theater, I believe, that is not a specifically um, set up in a proscenium style, which is, um, you know, when you're looking at a stage and it's right there, uh, this one is like more like the Coliseum. So it's in the round um, and the audience is all around you. And it, um, it was a really interesting uh, way to work because we were constantly having to think about angles for each set of people in each section to be able to see something interesting. Um, so it was, it was very, it was a challenge, um, but a very interesting way to work. Um, and the people there were just so great. And I worked there for like three, three and a half years. So it was a very long time considering for a, a kid actor. Um, so yeah, I would say that's definitely the place that felt the most like home to me since a lot of the other places were uh, really quick jobs. Um, and then I, I was too old or uh, there was another person who was my height when I started it, who they needed to take over. Yeah. Really great. Really great. It's wild. Um, but yeah, definitely circle in the square. Super fun and attached to has tunnels to the wicked theater. So uh, <laughs> fun, fun little fact. That just sounds very cool. Yeah. yeah yeah to check that out um i was briefly um it's been more than a few weeks now but i you know i told you i had the premiere i went to the stocking in new york um at the, it was at the madison theater so that's where i was at there the oh. movie theater, i don't know if you know that movie theater or not, how far you are. but yeah. um, i i was just there for that and then i left in the morning but i mean otherwise i've never really got to like visit other theaters or go around new york or not i'd like to one of these days but so. right because so I mean, cool. I love all those plays and everything. So it's like, I want to see something one day. I got to just come up and see something. So, uh, yeah, I love that. That's amazing. I used, yeah, I used, yeah. to, do, uh, I used to do uh, rebates. I used to do the approval rebates when I lived in, near Seattle. And I would always stop, pick, catch my bus across from the Seattle Opry House. Uh, I can always remember sitting there. Someday it's going to be a nighttime, big, big hmm. performance, and the limo is going to pull up. I'm going to get out. That was my dream at the time. Mm. Oh my gosh. That's so perfect. I love that so much. Opera houses are beautiful. So great. Uh, except when you put it up across from a big giant post office. Yeah, that was that was an interesting choice. That was an interesting choice. Literally, uh, that, right that's now. where I would catch the bus. There's the post office, and you look across the street, and it's above tunnels. The Seattle 
Metro Tunnels. Oh. Huh. So. Interesting, interesting mm. choice then. Hmm. That's Seattle for you. Oh. <laughs> I remember um, totally random, but it sort of deals with theater. Um, I forget the name of it. I believe it's in Greece, though, where if you stand in the middle there, where um, you can whisper and everybody can hear you. Oh. I, I forget that I call it Sam or theater or something in Greece. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. I, I can't think of the name, but like. There's specific theaters that are built like that that are so, Ooh. so interesting. Mm -hmm. You can hear anything from anywhere in those theaters. That's it's, what you're saying. Like you could whisper and they can scary. still hear So, so yeah. it, it, it enhances the sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where I, again, when I lived in Seattle, we have, we, have, we called it the echo chamber, but it didn't echo, but you couldn't whisper in it because it would do the same thing. It was just a small, about 20 by 20 foot, like in, a little thing where there was a phone. But it, like okay, the way it was built, you couldn't whisper because it would enhance the sound. Yeah. So you yeah. have to be quiet talking on the phone because otherwise it might be a little loud. The phone picking it up. Wow. Shouldn't have a phone <laughs> on here anyway. Why do you have the phone on? <laughs> like uh, it's, it almost sounds like a blooper in uh, Rush Hour 2 when he gets a call on. He's like, I'm filming right now. Jackie's right here. He's like, you call. You interrupt scene. We're filming. <laughs> you know, have oh you ever seen God. the blooper of that? I, uh, I haven't. I haven't. That's amazing. It's, it's, yeah, it's at the end of the movie when they have the bloopers during the credits and stuff. And he's like, you are not professional. He has his phone on. <laughs> that is, oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> has that ever happened uh, when you guys would when you were doing like Stranger Things or uh, you know Perfect Little Liars? Liars. Did something like that ever happen where you're filming and all of a sudden something someone's phone goes off or something? Oh gosh, definitely not a phone. That would be really bad. Um, most people, well, actually, I know some people who keep their phones like in their pockets in their outfits, even if it's not like specifically period. Uh, like period for the show. Um, but I would say there are a lot of really good bloopers. Um, we ha had um, a specific episode of Pretty Little Liars that was shot in a hall of mirrors at a carnival. Okay. And it was, it was really interesting because we ha had to like map out specifically um, wh what was actual, like what was an actual pathway and what was a dead end. And sometimes we would mess it up. Um, so having to do like a lot of choreography for that was really interesting because sometimes we would end up walking into like places that had no, or or the camera was seen in one of the mirrors only, just one of the mirrors. Um, so that took a while and that was very interesting. There were a couple of times that we did bump into mirrors. Um, and it was it was kind of interesting because it was it was very <laughs> we were just trusting ourselves to navigate a whole fun house. And it was very interesting. Um, and then I would say for Stranger Things, <sighs> never any any bloopers with a phone going off for me um, or for anyone with me. There were a couple of really fun mo most of the moments actually once again had to do with improving and then breaking character. I feel like specifically with Stranger Things, they give you a lot of liberty with um, just how much you add and, and create with your own character and how much on script you want to stay. Um, they, they give a lot of personal liberty to the actors. So a lot of that has to do with a lot of the bloopers that end up happening. Um, and it's really cute because afterwards at um certain rap parties they will play you some of the best ones and it's really great it's really great yeah it's cool when you ever you get to add your own role to the character or lines or yeah that fits your characters yeah. like that's it's always fun yeah. i mean i know some things yes you guys you know of course stick to the script but when you're hey, person, come on look at full metal jacket that scene mm -hmm. with r lee when he's yelling Ooh. at them that was improv yeah. Or, or they live. Rowdy Piper's a lot of his stuff, including the the I'm famous bubble the, gum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here the kick. Was I here the whip kick ass and chew bubble gum and I'm all out of gum. <laughs> out of bubble gum. Yeah. There's <laughs> there's so much that has been so priceless just from improv. It's amazing. It's amazing. Even though it's kind of like it's it's a difficult thing to do. 
it's a difficult thing to do, but like some people are just so great at it that it's, it's perfect. Yeah. I, I saw something recently when they were doing, um, because I had watched Ted, it's been a while since I've watched Ted, but they also did like, uh, I saw someone on YouTube, they were like doing uh, an improv, they were shouting out and Ted, it was like depressing, uh, like things to shout, like, uh, we give us a thought, 9-11, <laughs> like naming all this, they're like, they all stuff, they're like, um, let's do something else. And they're like, because that was like, oh my God. Yeah, you know how Family Guy and Ted and Seth MacFarlane is. It's oh like, my God. Uh, now there's going like, to be a, all this yeah. depressing improv. <laughs> but the, hey, wow. you know there's going to be a Ted TV show. Yeah, Ted TV show. Oh, right. Yeah, when I had heard there. about that. So, and he's like writing a letter to himself. I bet uh, going to be on a popular streaming network. Eh, almost right. Because it was uh, Peacock, I think it's going to be. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then it said something like Flying Carson. He's like, oh, poor bastard had such high hopes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I can't wait. So. There's so many. There's so many great things now that now that strike mm. is over. Oh, I can't. So, wait. Yeah. I'm so glad that it's finally going to be worked on. So, I mean, like going back to the, you know when we first scheduled this, uh, I was telling this, Stephen, we had we were scheduled to interview you. I watched. I did a binge watch of Pretty Little Liars. I really? Get, uh, I get done. He goes, "Oh, mm. by the way, so, what? I got what? some bad news." <laughs> Oh my gosh. I did that for nothing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. It was like, yeah, we were all ready, had everything ready, what we we're gonna talk about, and we were all excited. Oh. Like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I know it's not your fault, but it's just like, why? <laughs> I like, know, oh. I know. I'm so glad that we got to do this now, though. It's perfect. Uh, it's, finally, <laughs> it's been so finally. Finally. So it's like, when was it? Let's see. Was it December was when I met you in Ocala? So it's been months since we've talked about this. Like crazy. Yeah, so. it really has been. So, That's yeah. so, it's so incredible. I'm so glad that you both had me. I'm, I'm so honored. I'm so honored. <laughs> Any other um, conventions you got coming up? Uh, do you know of or? Well, the convention year for uh, scheduling is actually technically uh usually over come december and then doesn't start back up again until february march so hopefully by then i'll have a solid a solidified schedule um so nothing right now but uh the year is officially over the last one that i just did um was it up up in new york um in saratoga springs so very fun um Hopefully but, you'll come yeah. to Mega. Hopefully you'll come to MegaCon in February. Gaten's going to be there, and Joseph is going to be there. I also. hope so too. I, I hope so too. Was. Like, how can you have Gaten and not have uh, <laughs> you come on? Like, I on. know. I saw that, and I'm really hoping. I'm really hoping because I know that those are really big. I know MegaCon's a good one. Yeah. Really so, so yeah, and there I forget who else they're going to have there. Um, Danny Trey is going to be there. I don't know if you had a chance Ooh, to meet him yet or not. That day. Uh, um, oh my gosh! Uh, the whole cast of Charmed is going to be here, which I've met them all except Alyssa Milano, and she's going to be. I'm like, oh, I want to meet. Oh Alyssa my Milano. gosh! I'm like, oh wow! So, I mean, they've got yeah. some good. So maybe, maybe people who are watching will be like, hey, let's write MegaCon and be like, hey, let's get. Uh, you know, we got Gate in there. Let's get Gary there. Come on! <laughs> so I'm hoping so. I'm hoping I, so. I get the dates. It's February. I don't know if it's in seven. I forget. I have to double check, but um. If you, you want to check out the website, it's just megaconvention.com. And so that's so perfect. Uh, I see so many people say so many things about that. I'm so excited for this one. Hopefully, I'll be there. Fingers so, crossed. We'll see. It'd be nice seeing you again, too. It was great meeting you the first time. I mean, it was great seeing yeah. you at Cal. I was when you were at it. I'm like, yes, that's amazing. I know. It was a great scene. So you. much fun. And Broadway. Ocala, and all that. Too. Ocala so, is beautiful. Yeah. I love it. And then. Uh, <laughs> so Orlando's what, what, fun. What were you going to say? Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, the, the last question I'm gonna ask you because it's been almost you know a couple and a half hours here. Um, I asked yes. this is there any fun or interesting facts fans may not know about you? About me. Yes. Ooh, um ooh. Uh most people don't know this because I don't usually talk about it that much. I am in school right now. Um, I'm almost done with school, uh, college. Um, and it just so happened that everything lucked out and I 
have been able to work completely through college as well. But I study uh, music composition mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of different types of music performance and also psychology as a double major. Um, but I'm really interested in uh, child development and working with kid actors one day, uh, along with being an actor. Um, so yeah, a lot of a lot of really fun stuff. But I, I know most people I don't usually talk to about that unless they're really into stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a, that's a fun fact. Um, yeah. Nice. Yeah. And, uh, you, <laughs> and uh, you being a Terrifier fan, of course, um, you saw a little bit of my last show when David Howard Thornton was on and everything and, and his yes, exit. That's what when I he was, was going to bring up. That's what we, I was going to bring yes, up. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, his exit there is like, oh, it's like, um, I, I, I know you wanted to top that and all, and, or you had something you wanted to say to David. Uh, go ahead. Go for oh, it. Oh, yes, <laughs> I did. I did. Now, see, I, it's very hard to live up to that incredible exit. But per request of, of so many people, um, and specifically the show, I have a very special ending for a lot of people who will probably enjoy. Um, got the music going, got the music going. Okay, here we go. Make believe I'm everywhere, but you guys gotta sing along. Give it in the light. <laughs> Turning on the pages is the answer to a never ending story. Oh, yeah. And that's what I have to say to David. That's what I have to say. That's what I have to say. All right. We'll get that message to him, of course. Amazing. <laughs> and sorry for our horrible singing, but yes. <laughs> it's a duet. It's meant to be sung with other people. It's not a solo. <laughs> exactly. Store. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's like, I'm an actor, not a singer. I'm sorry, but thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. So, it's been so fun. It's absolutely. been so fun. And Both I'm of sure. You have such an incredible night. So such you do. And you have a good holiday we'll now. Again, so. Yes, you both too. Enjoy all of the amazing, amazing holiday horror movies that that you can muster and bear. I hope it is very, very fun. Yes. <laughs> and good I got to work early in the morning myself. So everybody, have a good night. Uh, next oh, week yes. is uh, Angela Bradford from uh, Debbie Does Demons and a whole bunch of other stuff. So oh, everybody perfect. check that out next week. So. All right. Thanks again. Amazing. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Take care. <laughs> hey. Take care, Stephen. I got to go. I got All my cousin. Right.